you guys flying? Moros Navy.
Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and today is March 9th, YC125, and this is the Eve Universe Show. Welcome, 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 guys. We are here. We are here at the uh, lovely AMO, uh, AMO, which is the new headquarters for the Mimitar, as you can see. Uh, it looks like the Mimitar have finally gotten around to building up their infrastructure, although there is still basically no ships available in the uh, fleet arrays. But uh, they there they are. They've been constructed, I think, as of yesterday or today. I think today. And there's likewise ones in Amar, too, uh, which we'll probably check out, like, tomorrow or whatever. But uh, for now, we're here. That's right, Roughnecks. There is some trig stuff going on. Zoria Triglov has entered the chat. All right, so uh, what we have today is we have some Hobo League stuff to go over. Uh, we have a World News to go over. And I want to say there was another piece of news. Hold on, let me check. Oh, yeah, we've got we've got uh, the Tranquility Trade. Uh, sorry, the Tech 4. And a um, little bit of patch notes, but not really. Some Hobo Leaks and then the, the lore stuff. A flock of Nagle bars will look nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once this place starts filling up. So it'll be interesting to watch this place as it fills up because often, like, the amount of watching the navies within the various areas is a good way of kind of keeping track of where they are and where they're putting their focus. They seem to move around a lot. Okay. Just waiting to get people in here. We got all, oh, people are definitely coming in. Um, which one should we do first? Let's just cover the the more mundane news first. How about that? So, first and foremost, we have something. Really? Amazing. I tested this like three times while we were in the back. All right. Tranquility Tech 4. Now, uh, I was actually just talking about this the other day with people, so it's kind of interesting that this came up. What do they mean by this? Well, uh, EVE is super complicated um, and runs on some really, really powerful servers. Some of the best around. Um, back in like 2018, 2019, they did an upgrade called Tranquility Tech 3, where they basically, uh, it used to be before there was a, uh, what was known as the Everest node. Um, and Jita was on its own version of the Everest node, which is like the most powerful server that they had. So that was the server for like fleet fights. And with Tranquility uh, Tech 3, they mostly made it so that like every node was like an Everest node. Um, now, obviously with the pandemic, silicon chips became just basically impossible to get. Everybody had server upgrade plans. Nobody got to do them. Um, but here we are three years later, and we're finally getting around to a major upgrade. We're at Tranquility Tech 4. We know that they have been adding in some new stuff with the tech, but this is now we get a dev blog about it. There's an age-old question facing all capsuleers. If you replace your spaceship one spare part at a time, when is the spaceship a completely new and no longer the original? This is a reference to the ship of Theseus, which is a thought experiment, right? If a, if a ship goes out, the ship sails for Theseus. Uh, and as they go, they do repairs to the point where by the time, after a certain period of time, every single piece of the ship has been replaced. Is it a new ship? Is it the same ship? When does that transition happen? None of it is like functionally the same original ship, and yet it is the same ship. That's the ship of Theseus. 
Either way. Uh, that's where we find ourselves now with the Tranquility hardware. Nothing remains of Tranquility Tech 3. The current cluster is entirely Tranquility Tech 4. So yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, over the last several years, we've been upgrading piece by piece by piece rather than all at once. So what they're basically saying is, is that we've now hit a point where we can no longer, like, we can clearly say that it's no longer Tranquility Tech 3. Nothing of Tranquility Tech 3 still remains. As a part of continually evolving and modernizing EVE, we keep improving Tranquility's technology to achieve better performance. This was a big piece of the EVE Forever project. The end goal is to ensure that it lasts forever, in turn making a, your experience in New Eden a continuously exciting one. In early 2016, oh wow, okay, well, time has passed. Time is an illusion, lunchtime doubly so. In early 2016, new hardware for Tranquility was developed after months of preparation. Since then, several changes have been made, hardware upgrade and superseded, and a number of fixes implemented, but not many hardware-specific blogs have been published. So let's amend that. Back in the day, EVE Online was fully on-premises with a data center in London with a few external services uh, such as a login server, but on-premises in that same data center. The EVE launcher would update the EVE client from uh, a content delivery network, and the EVE client would connect via load balancers to a proxy node, which would then in turn connect to an SOL, uh, SOL node. So that was actually added because of the they had DDO, DDoS attacks for a long time. So they had to switch to this load balancer and proxy system, which would use the Microsoft SQL Server database as their backend, both for some of the business logic, but primarily for storage. Everything was in our London data center, and the universe was in a single database. And all was well. No. Then the crystal cracked. The difference between proxy nodes and the SOL nodes is that uh, in the Tranquility cluster is mostly that session management is done on the proxy nodes, even if some processing happens there as well. Example, there's a dedicated market proxy service that fronts the market for uh, uh, SOL service. But there's also an intended architecture of the proxy nodes being spread across the world with a dedicated network backhaul. <clears throat> Instead, we eventually ended up moving the London data center network behind Cloudflare's network services in early 2020 after adjusting for our DDoS protection for over a decade. That's what it was. Using Cloudflare since then as the front door. That's what it was. Yeah, they came under DDoS, so they moved over to Cloudflare and let them be the entrance point for all of their connections. Fully describing te Tranquility Tech, 5, or Tech 4's ecosystem today is not simple. EVE Online now spans across the on-premise cluster and services and also various cloud services that both the EVE client and Tranquility connect to. This includes chat, search, image server, and a message bus with multiple gateways and a whole host of similar, uh, smaller domain services and one with a, a targeted scope. In addition, there are a few external services such as Project Discovery. This is actually why, by the way, guys, that some of these services, some of these functions in game can just become disrupted, especially things like chat and search. You know, the entire game could function perfectly great but if that external service is not working, then it's just not going to be responding. And the client just kind of tries to work accordingly, right? Um, so that's why we've been seeing, uh, that's why you see some of those things and why they uh, seem to be isolated like that. Because these are, in fact, totally separate things that all kind of feed into one uh, client. <clears throat> A number of changes were made between 2016 and 2020. Mostly involving the network behind the cloud fair, including uh, added Intel Gold 5122s and Gold 5222s powered machines to the cluster and deprecating Intel E5 2667V3 powered machines. But then a large portion of the hardware changes happened between uh, October 2021 and February 2023. And in 2021, the storage of our London data center and the game database machine, both its hardware and, and SQL server version were upgraded. This new storage is an IBM Flash System 7200. They use this NVMe attached drives. There is no more spinning disks now, so it's all solid state. Does not mean that a space ha does that mean that the space hamsters are gone? No, no, it does not. Uh, and the new database hardware is comprised of two Dell, Dell EMC Power Edge R750 ma machines, primary and standby pr pair. Each one a dual CPU Intel Gold 6346. Each CPU with 16 cores with two terabytes of memory. Uh, memory is court being RAM. Memory is RAM. The setup is fully redundant and looks like this. Ooh. Ah. You can read all about the details of our new storage and the new database machine in this dev blog and take a look at the four terabytes of memory in the new database machines all seen below. Ooh. <laughs> look at all those sticks, man. Look at all those sticks. Those are all sticks of RAM. The old database hardware was a, magn a magnificent beast of a different era era after the data after of a different error 
After the data center move in 2016, the data game database was running on two machines, primary and standard pair, with E7-8893 V3 CPUs, and there was another identical set of machines for the other databases. It became clear that a single such machine wasn't enough for the uh, game DB, but since that other set of machines was effectively idling, they were joined together, as in literally joined together physically with a special clip. Lenevo calls this quick path interconnection QPI. Out of, out of the four machines, we then got a set of primary standby by machines, where each one was actually two machines joined together and acting as one. There was a dramatic video of this in FanFest 2018. As mentioned before, we merged two DBs into one. Uh, this is some monumental work. In uh, where he just single-handedly took on the task. Let's just see how it went. Right then uh, a speedier and more reliable startup uh, let's wander off the path here for a moment and talk about software the old database hardware was two machines joined together with, uh, and each one a dual CPU system and therefore 16 cores are split into four NUMA nodes with very different memory access latency each of the four cores what I, uh, I recently came back to Eve and joined Calmel Corp uh, near Devon and I've had the pleasure of killing and being killed by you your your love of the game is great to see I, I've seen you out there Dylan awesome um, uh, each of the four sets of core, uh, each of each set of four cores would have its local memory and then remote memory in the same box attached to the other CPU, and finally the remote memory axis of the QPD, QPI attached to the CPUs in the other box. We would sometimes encounter what was called the NUMA node issue, where during startup, after downtime, especially after the primary standard standby failover when the cache would be empty, one NUMA node, uh, one set of four cores, would become incredibly busy for an extended period of time, and the other 12 cores would be almost idling. Yet the game cluster was hammering the databases with requests and barely making the startup due to the delayed response from the busy database. This was fixed with a software change in August 2020. By the data, changing the database connection data structure from a stack to a queue and cycling through available DB connections instead of using the most recently used connection. This distributed the load more evenly across all four NUMA nodes. Still, when selecting new database hardware, the focus was on reducing the number of NUMA nodes and the new machines have two NUMA nodes. Uh, the memory attached to each CPU socket with 16 cores each. So, uh, by the way, guys, if, if this is boring or super technical, guys, like... Let this just, if you, if you get nothing out of this, understand that CCP really, really does care about this game and is continually upgrading this. This is all stuff that has been happening. All of those times for the last two years while everybody's talking about how CCP's abandoned the game, here they are doing work. After moving to the new, SA, uh, the new SAN, the new database uh, hardware and SQL Server 2019 in October 2021, it was time to look for the new few remaining startup issues. These were eventually solved with, startup, uh, with software changes. During the startups, the average service startup time across all the nodes for each service did not tell the entire story since the average was skewed by a few random nodes each time taking, uh, each time taking a long time. I think it means each one taking a long time. The, oh, each time taking a long time. Each, every time they take a long time. The head node of the, uh, in the cluster orchestrating the startup had to wait for the last node at each step. So the maximum service startup across the nodes is what mattered. This was traced to the random slow responses from the database where the list of values were being converted to order tables that were unkeyed heaps. Instead of a uh, set of conversions from a list of values to key tables that were created, and then a large set of store procedures were tested to see which method worked better. The first batch of fixes was deployed in March 2022 and improved the startup significantly. The maximum uh, was drastically reduced. Man, this just reminds me, the first place I ever worked, uh, the first company I worked at as like a full-time big old software developer, their entire database had zero primary keys. He said it made it faster. So yeah, there you go. Here's December of 2020, uh, here's December 22, no, December 2021, 2022, February, March, and then at March, 
boom. And that's a totally different, like, th this is the same service. Like, that's the, like, March 10th, boom. And that resulted in a better average. Here's the average, once again. Like, basically, a, just a fall off as soon as they got their thing set up. The bulk of the remaining tra uh, machines in Tranquility, the so-called rank-and-file file ES2637V3 machines, would be, become seven years old at the end of 2022 and would leave extended warranty. Uh, rank and file is how we refer to the largest group of machines in Tranquility that mostly handle solar system simulations. Tranquility is not a homogenous cluster, neither from a hardware perspective nor a software perspective. Various services, such as the market, are on different hardware, and loaded solar systems, such as GETA, are separate. The Tranquility Tech 3 GETA started off on an ES or E5 2667 V3 machine and later moved to a Gold 5122 machine and then a Gold 5222 machine all of which were not the rank-and-file machines of Tranquility Tranq Tech 3. By contrast, currently, Cheeta is on a gold 6334 machine, which are the rank-and-file machines of Tranquility Tra Tech 4. So Tranquility Tech 4 is better than even the best of Tranquility Tech 3. Even the, the rank-and-file of Tranquility Tech 4 is better than the best of Tranquility Tech 3. Uh... <laughs> So it's decided to buy fewer uh, but, but larger machines to replace them. Tranquility is arranged in five flex chassis with six spare chassis. There you go. Look at that cable mon management. Mm -mm, and just ignore that one right there. Tranquility Tech 3 had five rank-and-file machines with the, uh, in each chassis where each machine was a dual CPU quad-core system, total of eight cores that ran eight nodes, a total of 30, uh, 200 active nodes, and 40 spare nodes. Each rank-and-file machine in Tranquility Tech 4 is a dual CPU octa-core system, a total of 16 cores, and there are three of them in each chassis. Each one runs 13 nodes at the moment, a total of 195 active nodes and 39 spare nodes, which are likely to be, which we are likely to reduce because of an improved performance. In short, 30 machines were replaced with 18 machines while keeping the node count similar. A node is a proxy or SOL process in the game cluster that is assigned a spe specific task. For example, in Tranquility Tech 4, 4, there are 170 nodes assigned to general solar system simulation for all empires, null and wormhole solar systems. But on the other end of the spectrum, Jita is solo on one node, and the market uh, for the Forge is solo on another node. So there's basically two nodes that just make Jita work. The new machines are the Lenovo Think System SN55 V2 Dual Core machines with two octa core. Intel Xeon Gold 3334 3.6 gigahertz processors and 512 gigabytes DDR4 memory at 32 mega, 100 megahertz. Once again, ooh, ah. Look at all those RAM stick spots. The CPUs are run fixed at their base frequency of 3.6 uh, gigahertz since only half of the cores on each CPU can run as high priority cores at 3.7 and then the other half drops to 3.4 and we cannot control which node solar system ends up at the high priority cores and which one on the low priority cores. Fe variable frequency also interferes with our CPU usage metrics. DD DDR4 RAM at 3200 me megahertz is a solid step up. This is the highest memory bus speed we have, we have had. The previous rank and file machines, DDR3 memory ran at 2133 megahertz and the gold 5122 and 5222's DDR4 memory runs at 2666 and 2933 megahertz. And the upgrade from the DDR3 to DDR4 is a significant performance boost. In particular, the memory bus speed uh, increases is important. So this is a big thing about RAM that like a lot of people that don't build computers might not realize, which is that like you say, okay, well, I've got 16 gigs of RAM. Not all like that's just how much space is in the RAM. It's not how responsive the RAM is, right? So there's two different things. There's how much how much the RAM can hold and how fast the RAM can process things and spit out information, right? So what they're saying here is that the new RAM is 3,200 megahertz, which means 3,200 cycles per, uh, it's per second, right? Hertz is, yeah, per second. Whereas before it was at 2666 or 23, 2933 megahertz per second. So you're talking about at pretty much at minimum, uh, a 10% upgrade in response time uh in just the the snappiness of the ram that is a big big deal for anybody who's ever upgraded their ram 
Uh, since 13 nodes are run off of uh, each of the new machines, 512 gigabyte uh, total RAM entails an average of 39.4 gigabytes per node. This is a setup for the 32 gigabyte average on the old machines, but is less than the 48 gigabyte average on the gold 30, 51, 20, uh, 5122 and 5222 machines. So we host memory hungry nodes such as all character services which are primarily skills and skill trainings, and also all of industry on the gold 5122 and 5222 machines. So the ones that have more RAM, remember, RAM, the, the, the size of the RAM is how much information it can process or be kept keeping in its, like, storage. And uh, the, the, the hertz of the RAM is how snappy it is. So the slightly slower but much more spacious uh cpus servers and cpus are being tied to big data intensive things skills skills tra training industry whereas the more snappy ones are for uh simulation server nodes uh or like um solar system nodes etc a side note here is that we run 40 character service nodes in the old uh, so the total memory space for those services is close to two terabytes we have found that uh in our hashtag node downtime experiments uh, that the memory uh, that should be no downtime experiments. They experimented with no downtime, not that they are saying down with downtime experiments. That the memory pressure of those machines uh, is about seventy-five percent at the end of the day, uh, at the end of day two, or about one and a half terabytes of total allocated memory. Aside, so what they're saying is, is that because the whole thing about the no downtime was is that without a downtime, it can't flush everything. It can't. It can't reset everything and, and get bring it back down to baseline and clean everything up. So what they're saying is even without that, it's still only built up to about 75% of its capacity by, day, by the end of day two. A side note on the side note is that the latest no downtime dev blog, we noticed that an auto reboot downtime of three minutes and 30 to 40 seconds is pretty normal these days. But in 2023, with all these improvements mentioned and more, it's two minutes and five to 15 seconds. So that's a third increase. Here's a very scientific, no downtime progression graph from 2021 updated. Boom. Look at that, man. That is slopes for the slope thrones, right? We also said back then that, quote, there is a soft lower bound of approximately three minutes given the three different activities during downtime shutdown, database jobs, and startup, which last approximately one minute each, unless fundamental changes are made and those fundamental one is not have any downtime at all downtime will not become much less than 160 to 200 seconds that was then but we're now at 125 to 135 seconds so what you're doing is you're openly in my admitting to the fact that you lied you lied to us ccp how dare you each of the three different uh, activities during downtime has been improved to approximately 45 seconds 43 seconds compared to the previous one minute that's pretty impressive. The auto reboot is a very intensive period where all systems are, uh, are run at maximum throttle. So this gives us a good indication of the performance boost of these recent changes and how the new CPUs and new RAM are verifiably improved Tranquility's performance. Another way to see these is to look at the stable group of nodes, these nodes simulating the Empire's solar systems. So we see... Uh, January 29th is here. Gen uh, February 1st is here. This graph shows the effect of the new gold 6334 machines that were swapped in and the old uh, E5-2637 V3 machines that were removed after a period of two weeks. This graph would also be indicative of the performance improvements of unexpected fleet fights. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Check it out. I think what, hap what we see here is this top line is actually that the old machines... And what you see is this is the new machines kind of being phased in, and this is the new old machines phasing out. The effect is less when comparing JITA before and after since JITA was on a gold 5222 machine, but comparing we uh, weekend peaks, there is still good performance gains. Yeah, you can see right there, right? Like you begin the process, you end the process. The performance improvements of fleet fights uh, for which we get uh, fleet fight notifications ahead will be comparable to Jita's. Finally, back on hardware path after this detour into software metrics, all of the proxy hardware was replaced, removing the old E5-2667 V3 machines and replacing them with the new gold 5315Y uh, machines. This is more uh, a refresh to stay within warranty than anything else, and players should never really experience what these machines are doing. This might seem like a long post, 
but it's a brief overview of the changes that have been happening since 2016. The truth is the improvements just never stop. And by the time you read this, the machines used for other databases than the game database will have been updated. But that and more will be for another time. Excellent. Thank you guys for this update. Uh, this is this is a uh, this is really cool. A, a lot of us nerds really really like these super nerdy crunchy posts. I know that like I've referenced that Tech Three uh, post like several times over the last I guess now seven years. So um, yeah, Eve continues to evolve. Like to see a channel like uh, Linus Tech Tips, tips to take a tour of e CCB's facility someday. That'd be really cool. They have done tours of the uh, of their facility before, like showing it around, but not to somebody like that where they would have like technical knowledge of their own to bring to the table. Uh, I'm going to pretend like I understand all this topic and say this is a great change. Well done, CCP. It is. It, this is showing a continual commitment to making sure that the EVE servers are as awesome as possible. And remember, I can't stress enough that this is all happening in a in a world in which the, nobody in the world can get new chips, right? A lot of these updates that are happening in 2021 and whatnot, like these guys are out there hunting for some of the best processors in the entire world at a time when no one can make anything. As a software engineer, the people behind this game must be actual wizards. I agree. There are some pieces in here where I understand conceptually what they're doing. And as like a software engineer, terrifies me of the idea of actually trying to make this shit work. Right? I cannot be alone in that. Like, good on... Uh, the, the guys who make, like... The events team, all these people that may get all of the, like... Like, uh... Pizzazz and highlights... They're good and all, but these server dudes are just the heroes. Also lost Hilo 1 to a DC. That's unfortunate. Uh, it makes me just want to get a job at CCP. Seems like it can be a fun challenge. If you enjoy Iceland or London... Okay, so that was cool. I'm going to play an ad, and then we're going to go to the next thing. Uh, the stories of how these guys came up with some of the server tech is equally heroic. It's true. As an SRE, this is the real deal? Hell yeah. Okay, hold on. I think Tranquility is going down on me. Or, oh, no! No, 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 no. At 19.34? Yeah, we've got five minutes. Shoot. Okay, well, let's look at some stuff, okay? Real quick, uh, we'll look at Hobo Leaks later if we can, if we need to. But um, And we'll see how long this stays down. And we might get another patch, so we'll be able to look at that. But I do want to show off real quick uh, the, like the, the big thing that we're going to be looking at is the fact that we have these new rats... There's a new set of Triglavian rats, uh, rogue drones. So there's obviously two new sites that are coming. One is a hacking site and one is a mining site that are both coming uh, to this whole construction part because you have the muted adaptive construction component, right? Where which requires. Nope, that's dead. None of this is is working yet. Um, but we have the Villa Autopoiesis node, Allopoiesis node, which is a hacking uh, can, and we also have back from the original Shadow War stuff. We have where is it? Maybe not. Shoot, where is it? Yeah. So there's this new uh, Rakavine ore, right? That that refines into Tritanium, Isogen, and Zydrine, but they're going to be adding in a new mineral called Neojaterite, which this is going to be used... Um, uh, these are going to be used in the new manufacturing. So on top of everything that we already know, um, which again, we'll look at all of this in about a minute and or like in a few minutes, 
But from what we already know, not only do, this is about that second phase, right? So the first phase of the construction project, you have to gain both technologies. You have to have the transporter technology and the transmitter technology, and no one group has both at the moment. Uh, and then on top of that, you still have to build the dang thing. So this is the building part. You need the Triglavian data and you need the ore or the mineral uh, turned in in order to build the stellar transmitters. Also, we'll look at these in, um, yeah, we'll look at these on HoboLeaks because there is actually some pretty interesting pictures of these guys. Uh, this old Imperial research station sat abandoned in the Anamon system for over a decade, largely untouched beyond occasional intrusions but from the crystal of pirates. This tr tranquility ended in early YC-125 when the Kaldari Navy forces occupied the facility and drove away the Grissus presence entirely. The state has remained tight-lipped about what they hope to gain from occupying this former Imperial facility. Huh. Oh yeah, because the Anamon is the Kaldari headquarters. That's right. Uh, Villa Scarbank uh, variants of the Triglavian controlled rogue drones patrol the, uh, the Villa Alipoesis. Hey, thanks for that, Brian. Uh, Nexus sites and the Neosilicate Rakavine fields from which the Triglavian automated industrial facility source much of their materials. The anchoring Villa Sarbnik variant is equipped with warp disruptors alongside its array of destructive ve we weapons. Oh, so it's it's a warp disruptor, not a scram. Interesting. Rogue drones have been encountered in large numbers of an abyssal dead space in Pochfin. This question of how the rogue drones entered the abyss is a mystery that remains unsolved as of yet, unless you believe my theory. Uh, there is a considerable evidence that the Triglavians have subverted large numbers of the rogue drones, perhaps to press them into service in the collective's conflict with the invading drifters. And so we see that they have a starving one, which is Newt's, uh, tangling one, which is Webb's. I find it interesting that these rogue drones have taken on the nomenclature of, um, of the Triglavians. Kaldari parked in Leviathan right next to it. There's a post about this on Reddit a few days ago. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's what that was. Right. I, yeah, I was too busy focusing on the fact that um, the uh, they were asking if this was going to be the next site for the ship caster or whatever. And I was like, well, we know where the ship casters are going. <clears throat> so this is an escalation of the trigger sleeper conflict. Well, I mean, it's all everything's escalating. But I mean, like the drifters have always been there. That's the thing is, is that like just because we don't actually like get reports from the trig about what how things are going doesn't mean that they aren't in conflict. All right, and server down. Maybe. There it is. Okay. We will keep an eye on Singularity for it to come back up. In the meantime, let's head over to Hobelix. Do you think there's a possibility that someone in the future, sometime in the future, CCP will release something like Shipcaster so it can be used by the null blocks to avoid a repeat of 1TQ? Yes! Should I elaborate? No, uh, CCP has straight up said that these faction campaigns, these faction arcs, are the way in which things are being introduced into the universe. So this transportation tech is going to be first developed by the Empires, but it is very possible that the Stellar uh, Transmuter and or... The shipcaster technology itself will be um, uh, able to be applied by the player empires in some way soon. In fact, if you remember uh, back in the day, where is it? Um, if we go back to the news. Where is it? View news archive. Uh, 
Uh, or was it, hold on, actually, now that I think about it. Is it here? I don't think it's here. Is it this one? I think it's this one. Yes. So if we see here the expansion icon. Ah. The Q2 expansions icon is a star being stellar transmuted. So... Yes, CSP Aurora specifically said that the new faction warfare conquering systems could be, if proven effective, fun, etc., spread across the universe and change how SOV works. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Can you give us a quick reminder on what the stellar transmitter is? Is that what you said? And the ship casters are. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. The best way for me to do that, honestly, is to just go Eve scope. Let's watch the, the scope video that just came out. Spark for a major hostilities between New Eden's big four empires have been growing over the past few months, with no sign that the escalation can be reversed. Against this background, with the empires apparently racing to develop advanced power and transportation technologies, a fresh diplomatic crisis has erupted. Allegations of Edencom and Concord agents gathering details on Caldari State research into new shipcaster technology were the spark for a major diplomatic row between the empires. The Minmatar Republic accused the Amar Empire of using Edencom intelligence assets to covertly acquire technology from the Caldari. Subsequently, Caldari State investigations have revealed evidence that supports these allegations. Credible accusations of spying against an ally at such a sensitive time have put a significant strain on relations between the Amar Empire and the Kaldari State. Derived from Triglavian technology recovered from the Athenon system, the shipcaster is believed to have the capability to cast ships over vast interstellar distances with pinpoint accuracy. Able to bypass gates, sinusoidal jammers, and other defenses, the technology would provide the Kaldari Navy with a significant force projection advantage over its rivals. The Scope has learned that the Kaldari Navy is already preparing to build a shipcaster at a construction site located in Anaman. The fortified system in the Black Rise region has already seen extensive naval movements and construction, building it up as the Kaldari Navy headquarters for war zone operations. As the spying scandal rumbles on in diplomatic circles, it is being reported that senior figures in the Kaldari State and Minmatar Republic have begun security cooperation talks in the Kaldari system of Arakan, close to the Republic border. The new aggression and apparent duplicity of the Amar Empire comes at a time when the Galente Federation's militarization of the Intaki system is also coming under scrutiny. As New Eden's two largest empires appear increasingly ruthless and militaristic, some speculate that the Republic and state may seek a diplomatic realignment in their own national interests. This is Alton Havery, reporting for The Scope. Okay, so a sh that's what a ship caster is, but let's look at what a transmuter is. Does this have it? The Kaldari Navy has deployed significant fleets into the long-disputed yeah. system of Athenon in the Placid region. They confront the Galente in the Placid region, and perhaps even in Taki itself, or if the dispute can possibly be resolved without escalation to full-scale interstellar war. Yes. In Turner, the effects of the extreme stellar event that disrupted its star are still being felt throughout the system. The planet of Turner 1 and its orbiting station took very significant damage, with the planet being blasted to a scorched remnant and all life extinguished. In the event's aftermath, high levels of unstable wormhole activity have emerged across the star system. Scientists believe this activity is likely to continue as a permanent consequence of the catastrophic failure of the Amar Classic. Empire's prototype stellar transmuter experiment. In light of the devastation seen in Turner, the Minmatar Republic's tribal council have authorized shutdown procedures to begin at the two remaining stellar transmuters controlled by Minmatar forces in the systems of Egmar and Vard. 
The prototype transmitters, transmitters were originally deployed by the Imperial Navy in Amar-occupied Minmatar systems. Evidently, this was done with the purpose of testing reverse-engineered Triglavian technology. The Amar Empire has claimed to have gained enough knowledge from its experiments to move to the next stage of technological development. In a rolling offensive over the last two months, capsuleers loyal to the Minmatar Republic managed to recapture Vard and Egmar, enabling the Republic fleet to seize the transmuters. With further militia assistance, the Minmatar have rapidly caught up to the Amar and acquired sufficient research data to complete their own initial stage of development. Together with additional observations made of the Turner catastrophe and the crucial data gained by Minmatar capsuleer efforts, the Republic believes its control of the transmuters is such that it can safely power down their operations. Having completed their research, the Minmatar clearly intend to reap its benefits while preventing further stellar catastrophes. This is Alton Havery, reporting for The Scope. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> is there a destination component to the ship caster? Spark for so that's kind of the whole point, isn't it? Like, uh, check this out. I mean, this is pretty clear, right? So Onamon would be the location of the ship caster, and it projects out from there. So what I think is going to happen, just based on what they've set, what I think is going to happen is that these ship casters are going to become new strategic assets. So effectively, one of the things that happens in the game right now uh, is in Faction Warfare, there's a thing called battlefields. Battlefields happen every three hours. They're these big sites. They usually last like 45 minutes or more per fight. There's three different locations within the site. They're like 300 kilometers wide. They're the huge and they're big. They're worth 15% advantage and over a percent in actual contested value. This is a huge, huge swing, right? So every one of these battlefields are important and you usually want to use some bigger equipment on them, but they can spawn in any of the front lines. And you can see right here, like look at all, every single one of these bright green or bright blue systems can be uh, uh, the site of the of the battlefield. So what that means is like the first battlefield could be in Sutorento, and then the next one be in Mach uh, right? And and then the next one be in Pine, and then Operena, and then Pine, and then Pine again, and then whatever, right? Like it doesn't matter. So the issue is is that you've got these big ships. How do you get all of this expensive bigger equipment? Uh, it, they're not the, the agile. You know they can't get from the. You don't want to have a fleet that just literally is chasing their tail trying to get from uh, from battlefield to battlefield all day. But if you have one of these ship casters and it has the ability to be pointed to any given location, it could get pointed at, say, a battlefield. And then you'd be able to, you know, load up all your guys in your high sex, uh, you know, headquarters system, go to the ship caster and then blink in to wherever you are. Right. This could help. As I said, this could get get us to battlefields for sure, uh, or at least like that seems like the obvious solution to me, but it could be used for all kinds of logistics, right? Depending on how controllable this is. Uh, the fleet would should have to be in the rank of the return trip to, though. Yeah, although there are options for that. Also, uh, not really. You could also just seed things out there too, potentially. Um, at any rate, so... Yeah, that's the Stellar Transmuter and the Shipcaster. I've also suggested many, many times that I think that if we get the Stellar Transmuters, it could very well affect, like, be able to be used to affect NullSec systems. So, like, for instance, the, the best example is, well, if you put in a Stellar Transmuter, maybe it increases the number of wormhole connections, but now uh, Pockfin-style ore spawns. So now you can get Isogen, Tritanium, and all that stuff in NullSec. Uh, in those specific systems, if you can find one of those. The other thing to remember is that all of these transmuters requires an AO blue star. So even if you're talking about like them being used for invasions by a NullSec group, like sieging 1DQ or whatever, you're still going to have to find a AO blue star, most likely to um, to gain the power source from in order to power the transmuter or uh, the, the ship caster. Uh, whether if it'll affect hollow tray, I mean, it could affect a lot of things. I mean, uh, the, I mean, Pochfin and Pochfin filaments has already increased or changed the hollow trade pretty significantly. Um, yeah, let's check to see if, uh, if tranquility or serenity, singularity is back up.
Also, let's see if there's any update. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Nope, not up yet. Okay. So, uh, let's look at what they added in today. We get some more stuff about the shipcaster, or and we get more stuff about the uh, the transmuters. Uh, that research center gets changed. We get the node, and then we get all the the, the different um, uh, rogue drones. So the things that we looked at earlier. Uh, in addition to that, we find out that actually, uh, here's all the different cans. Hey, Sean. Bogard, thank you so much for that $20 super chat for the guinea pigs. Heck yeah. I'll make sure to get them something uh, special tonight or tomorrow when I run to the store. Uh, thank you so much, man. Do it for the guinea pigs. Uh, okay, so basically there are, you know, three types of difficulty. There's the mainframe or two, de two types. Yeah, two types. State research mainframe, data bank, mainframe, data bank, mainframe, data bank, data bank. And you can see that, like, so uh, this tier difficulty went from, I'm going to guess that went from yellow to normal red. And this one went from yellow to sleeper red, which is like the really hard one, the 90, the 90 uh, coherent ones. And then uh, the state stellar transmitter research library, uh, laboratory is where you turn stuff in. There's the Rakavine, it got its description updated. Uh, the Mute Adaptive Construction Components and Blueprints. Uh, and the Beacon Rec. But we can see we didn't get, actually get the Blueprint data itself yet. Uh, and we can verify here that, well, actually, no, we can't. Because right now, all three of them are just doing webs. So they're going to have to update these one more time because this web should be a warp disruption. And this web should be a uh, newt. Also in the strings, we can see that the construction site was changed into the State Cellar Research Center. So at least one of the construction sites was built in, uh, is completed into the research center. Uh, that abandoned research station became the occupied research station. Um, and hybrid construction component turned into muted adaptive construction component. Uh, and there's now a new task for the hacking construction sites. Uh, road drone manufacturing facilities within Pachin region, region can be hacked to obtain mute adaptive construction component blueprints required for shipcaster development. Use on your on, your onboard anomaly scanner to find these Villa Autopoiesis, Autopoiesis, yeah, Nexus sites. Um, use of a data analyzer uh, to hack at least four of the uh, nodes inside the site. Among the loot within, you may find mute adaptive construction component blueprints that we require. Uh, you can find these sites within the tr dangerous Triglavian controlled Pochman region. Scouting reports have indicated that they are most commonly in the territory controlled by Velis Clade. Okay. Any class, uh, any size of ship can enter these sites. You will need to fit a data analyzer module to hack the Allopoesis nodes within. Hostile rogue drones guards has been uh, spotted within these locations, so be prepared for combat. Uh, faction warfare goes to Pochman. Exactly. Um, also, newly discovered neosilicate racovine. Um, neososilicate racovine found within Pochman contains minerals required for the construction of interstellar ship caster. Mine, fit up a mining ship and use the onboard anomaly scanners to find asteroid fields containing this ore. This is already telling me that, like, I really, really want to use my prospect from the um, uh, the winter event that can do the mining and the hacking. You can find these sites within the dangerous Triglavian controlled Pachman region. Any size ship can enter these sites. You will need to fit a mining module or drones in order to collect the ore within. Hostile rogue drones guards have been spotted within these locations, so prepare, be prepared for combat. Once you've collected the neo -so silicate racovine ore, you can reprocess it into to obtain neo jarite mineral that is required to construct the interstellar uh, ship caster. Any shy, size ship can enter these sites. It makes me wonder whether... So that sounds like there's a... there's a. Hey, what's up, Ashiv? Uh, that makes it sound like there's a gate. Um, and if there's an acceleration gate, that will provide at least some protection for those people inside. 
Vela's face is a majority of the Galente Pochman connections. I wonder if that's a purpose to to help Galente actually finish the objectives this time. I think it's all the I think it's all related. So Vela's are the most diplomatic. They're the ones that are most connected to the rogue drones. And therefore, they were the ones that also made the closest connections to the most outreaching of the Empire factions, which was the Galente, right? So I, I don't think that this was like some sort of Machiavellian plan by CCP to give an advantage to the Galente. It just happened to work out that way, right? Like, uh, that they're just the guys with the rogue drones. And we can even look in the world news for the last several world news, and we'll see that there has been a lot of stuff about the rogue drones uh, and their activities in Pochman. Uh, but what is interesting here is um, using materials and blueprints obtained from Pochman and, and from T2 Moon Industry, uh, construct a completed mute adaptive construction component with a standard manufacturing facility. Um, manufacturing these components also requires composites derived from moon minerals. Uh, you can uh, feel free to purchase the blueprints and, com uh, and components of capsulators who have completed them. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Anamon or the Ilanaya. So there's two different systems that you can turn it in for for the Kaldari. And if you turn in the mute adaptive construction component, which is what requires the building. I see. So just like with the other one, if you, you have to get the pieces. The verdict on rogue drones uh, from the Triglavian clades is that the Velas feel that they can strongly work with them. Perun hates them, and Sfrog are indifferent. It's close, Suetonia. Uh, Velas feels like they can work with them. Uh, Sfarog hate them, and Perun were relatively um, on the fence about it. I've talked about this before. We can talk about it a little bit more uh, now if we wanted to. The so Tony, let, uh, let me know when um, Singularity is supposed to be back up, and we'll we'll dig into that. But um, uh, actually, hold on, real quick. Actually, let's do the let's do the. Yes, 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 yes. Velas are the drone loving Kalade. Um So, in fact, actually, uh, it, oh, it's up. Good. In the uh, Veles Clades, uh, Nafka, Overmind, Villa Super Nexus, or whatever, um, that device has the description that was originally on another item that gives the other clue about the Veles Clades alliance with the Rogue Drones. Um, I actually suspect, I have my own uh, uh, tinfoil about that. I've been over it before, and like I said, I can go over it again. Let's go ahead and check out Hobolik's. Uh, yep, there it is. All right, so we got the Viamin Alliance logo, the Zernitra Alliance, uh, the, the Zernitra logo. I think it's pretty clear to say that, like, at this point, I'm pretty sure every single emblem is going to be in the game when this patch is over. Oh, we have the blueprint. Here we go. 10 times organic motor applicators, 100 times crystalline carbonide, 100 times uh, tandem carbide, 100 times tungsten carbide, 100 times fernite carbine, 100 times reinforced carbon fiber, 5,000 isogen, 5,000 zydrine, uh, 10,000 of the neogyrorite, and 50,000 trit. Uh, so that's a lot. Yeah, there's there's still no... Hey, hey Setonia? I just want to point out that it is still true that the Bustard is the only... It, I'm pretty sure this will make it so that the Bustard is the only uh, ship in the game that isn't... Uh, doesn't have a logo. So, take that for what it's worth. Okay, so... And in fact... Oh, I, I, I logged in as the other character last time. That's why. Um, are those reaction products in that BP? Yes. In fact, these three, these four, uh, these four reaction pro products are actually the four races armor. So it's all four races moon goo. We don't think they're finished with those yet. Well, they've got all of the like all four of the other ships, or I guess seven of the other ships of that same category, all have the logo. It's just the Bustard that doesn't have it. Just throwing out there. 
Uh, yeah, so... Let's see. Shadow War 2. All right. What are we looking for? Let's just grab all these first. Do these have logos yet? No, 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 no. Hey! This doesn't exist. Here's the Rakavine. It still doesn't have the special stuff in it. But this is now used in this. Here it is. Okay. So let me just double check this. Crystal carboline, carbonide is used in, oh. Capital parts, Inferno, and hybrid ammo. Pulse shield emitter blueprint. There it is. Yeah, and this is going to be used for, uh, there it is. There, oh, it's Galente. Okay, so yeah, crystal Crystalline Carbonide is Galentian. Yeah. Advanced Galentian Technology. Ha! Here we go. We're going to get there. We're going to get there one day at, at a time. All right. So, whoop. Then Titanium Carbonide would be Caldari. Tungsten Carbide is Amarian. And Fernite Carbide is Mimitar. And I just realized you can kind of tell by the color. Yep. And the organic motor compounds are a tier four material. So now we know that we're going to need organic motor applicators and uh, are they here? And recursive computing modules. So this requires pyrite, noxium, the and the three things that we're going to recover, and the recursive computing module. Whereas uh, the this part will require the organic motor applicators. And now I'm curious, because that's the tr okay. So transport relay needs recursive computing. Stellar transmuter. Requires recursive computing. Okay, so right as of right now, they both require the re recursive computing module. Uh, oh god, the the market is going to go berserk. You just figured that out, huh? Hello there, Astarathi, returning player. Glad to get to watch you live today. Oh seven, glad to see you. About the shipcaster, I still can't get it out of my mind. The idea that it would be so easy for CCP to make an event where Kaldari go to investigate Jove space or something like that. Amazing how that works, huh? I've said for a long time that uh, one of the, I think that the crown jewel of the Precursor Crisis is the eventual race uh, and fighting for control over the old Jovian territory. Um, you know, we know that the Stargates are basically all blown up. Uh, we know that the structures themselves are beginning to fall apart due to nano rot. We don't actually know what all is all in there at, anymore. Um, but it really does seem like a pretty natural extension of things, especially since, as I said, with all the gates destroyed, um, it could be like each individual system could almost become its own like beachhead. Like a like a wormhole space where get connections can be forged. Uh, I know the ship casters are new, but how do we know of any tech or method that block a ship coming from the caster? So far, it explicitly says that it gets around all known blockers. It's also true that this is very, very likely what happened 
to the Turner population, right? This is they they probably got beamed out, maybe to Pochvin, maybe to some other facility. So curse, no, uh, like Job Space, UU Tech or whatever, or U Tech, whatever it is. Hold on, what's the map? UUA, UUA Tech F four, that one. Anywhere with WW, uh, anywhere W477 Tech P. Oh, here it is. Wait, just join. What are ship casters? Been away from the game for a while. Uh, no, no, no. You use not, yeah, UUA Tech F4 is Joe's space. So basically, uh, one more time, real quick. Um, effectively, the tech, the trick, the Empires are reverse engineering Triglavian technology to attempt to build devices that will allow them to project ships, teleport ships uh, with unbounded range and per pinpoint precision uh, without the need of Sinos and to get around Sino jammers and other stuff like that. At this point, they're using it to develop it to build their facilities within their home headquarters for each of the faction warfare groups to allow them to project within the faction warfare war zone. Um, but who knows where it'll go from there. So the next event that is coming is uh, basically the Kaldari currently own the Triglavian transportation technology and the Amar and Mimitar own the stellar transmuter technology. You require them both to be able to make a ship caster work. So in the upcoming event, you will choose which faction you want to work for. And depending on which faction you work for, you have to steal technology from the other guys uh, and bring it to your own group and assemble them together into data cores by doing hacking, salvaging, and combat sites. And then you turn those in to the play, to your side in order to advance your research in that technology. And then once both technologies are researched, then you can begin constructing the gate itself by going into Pochfin and mining the ore there with the um, and, and hacking the data sites. So you hack the data sites to get the new BPCs, and you... Uh, you mine the ore, and then you put those together, and that plus other stuff becomes um, the actual ship caster construction itself. Once those two things are done, uh, or rather three things are done, that side now has a completed ship caster. Which, speaking of completed ship casters, let's look at those things, because they're pretty cool looking, actually. Hey, J. Koopa. All right. Oops. My bad. So this is, this says that it's a landing pad. So this actually could represent the other side of that, of the ship caster. Okay. Like it could very well be that they have points that they can jump to. And these kind of suggest that because these are a landing pad. I don't know if that's true. It could be, if you can see, it's got kind of these, I'm not showing anything. As you can see, <laughs> it's got these like three little prongs. So it could very well be that like this is like where it's designed to to end up things, you know, drop drop things out on. Uh, next, this is the Amarian ship caster, guys. So what we can see is we can see the Amarian logo. Uh, it's set into three, and we also see that they have their own science balls going on, which I find really interesting. Uh, and it actually has kind of these the 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 jets the the entropic containment. In the middle uh, maybe there's going to be another sphere in the middle there uh but i believe that this is actually why we need this, uh, the tr the transmitter because uh this these science balls probably use material from the transmitter i.e isogen 5 or something similar to that uh and then this is the caldari landing pad and the caldari ship caster once again, there's a glow in the middle there that kind of implies that maybe there's something there too. Um, and then here's the Galente landing pad and the Galente ship caster. And then the Mimitar landing pad and the Mimitar ship caster. 
They like to, to buck the trend and go with square. And that might be... Oh, hold on. What else do we got? Oh, yeah! So this is their transmuter arrays. So in front of the transmuter is a shield, right? The, the zero-point entangling uh, entanglers. So... Uh, or, sorry, zero-point condensers. So this is the Amarian version. It does sound very much like a replacement for the Ancilibix jump gate, doesn't it? Here's the Kaldari one. Here's the Galente one. Is there a Stormtrooper helmet on that array? Uh, this looks like... Um, it, this one reminds me of the Navigator from that 80s movie, like the Flight of the Navigator. Compliance! Hold on. Now I gotta look. Yeah, that thing. There it is. Then again, I think everything looks like that guy, so whatever. Maybe I just really liked that when I was a kid. Um, yeah. And then the Mimitar one <laughs> looks like the the Mimitar one. Like, like, look at this, right? Like the Amar one is actually really slick and circular, like a lot of the Amarian designs. The Kaldari one is a very block, utilitarian gray. You know, that looks fine. Uh, the Galentes look smooth and slick, like some fucking artist got paid way too much to design it. And the Mimitar one looks like some third world country's like slum land, right? Like this looks like a this looks like a view from above of some shanty town. It seems to me. Uh. Yeah. Oh, Borgoal is a good one too. So you've got group, you've got group points and personal points that you get. Then you've got your banners. And uh, you've got the relay tech part. There's the Mimitar banner. Uh. So what your what's your theory on why the rogue drones are in the abyss? Uh, do we want to jump to that, or do we want to finish what I'm doing here? There's the transmuter. That's so violently Mimitar. I know, right? So lots of cool, um, oops, lots of cool stuff coming. Hey, there you go. There's a there's a ship caster. And there's the stellar transmitter. See, it does. Like it, like look. May I think that this is actually not a transmitter. I think that this is the ship caster. And this is the center point there. Okay, so let's talk about road drones. Okay. Now, I have a video where I've talked about this before. So... But it appears that not even I can find it. So let's pretend like it doesn't exist. Okay. The Rogue Drones. So before, uh, to get too deep into this, I want to introduce you just in case uh, you aren't familiar with this kind of stuff. When the Triglavians, when we first entered into the Abyss, we were able to recover uh, some of the data uh, that they had. Um, data stream. Data stream. For a moment there, I totally brain farted it. So they have the AEA, the um, AFN, the 
DAV and the HFN and the XC, uh, CZ. The XCZ doesn't really count. They came later. When they first came out, the first four were available. And then a few months later, when they did uh, Secrets of the Abyss, five and six came out. So five and six for each one of them sounds differently than, than one through four. One through four is more like historical data. And five and six represents kind of ongoing data. So we'll look at those. Now, AEA is the ancient enemy as Daja. That is the uh, Drifters. AFN is Augmented Foreign Neurania. That's us, Capsuleers. The HFN is Hivelink Foreign Neurania, which is Sanchez Nation. And finally, the DAV is the Deviant Automata Vila, which is Rogue Drones. So let's walk through the story of the Triglavians and the Rogue Drones and see what we can learn. And uh, the Rogue Drones have a very particular, sorry, the Triglavians have a very particular way of talking. So I'm going to read it and then we're going to talk our way through it, okay? Subjunct Technical Traika of the Bellabog Subclade at Svaragclade reports to Paramount Strategic Traika Svaragclade the Entosis into Sub 9 Exclave, Sub 21 Exclave, and Sub 45 Exclave of Conduit Loop Construct 63 of Deviant Automata over repeated time coordinates indecipherable. Provisional Provost extirpation was invoked by the uh, observation of destructive mortification of claim holdings by Bellabog subclade by Corrupted Villa. Convocation of strate Strategic Traika of the Svaragclade reaffirms Poshloss extirpation invocation against Deviant Automata and extends it into advancing time. So this is actually, like, it's important to start here. Because, like, the short of it is, Vela's, hate the, uh, Vela's like the Rogue Drones, Svarag hate the Rogue Drones, Perun didn't have a very strong opinion either way. Uh, and we focus a lot on the Re Velas, uh clades' support of rogue drones, but like we always kind of frame the Svarog clade as, as just not liking rogue drones. They're just assholes that don't like rogue drones. But what we see here is that basically suddenly and out of nowhere throughout an entire conduit loop construct, which basically is uh, various different gates that like, link in together like Pochman does or like... Um, uh, an abyss. So basically throughout all, uh, multiple uh, exclaves of this conduit loop construct um, has been infected by rogue drones out of nowhere from K-Space, right? This is inside of the abyss. No one has traveled from th that we know of has traveled from K-Space to the abyss in thousands of years. And suddenly the Svarog find these uh, deviant automatas these rogue drones that have come repeatedly re over repeated time. Once they figured out how to get there, they were able to get there again and again. And uh, the Bellabog subclade, uh, tactical tra uh, technical Traika, um, reported this to the Paramount Strategic Traika. And then the... Um, uh, Provisional post loss extirpation was invoked on the observation of destructive. So, so then Bellabog subclade as far clade sees the rogue drones tearing apart their stuff and stealing their stuff because that's what rogue drones do. Um, uh, <laughs> when you when you browse RoboLeaks, do you sometimes imagine yourself as being a rogue spy hacking into a super secret empire database? I put on like uh, like hackers and sneakers and all of those like really bad. Uh, you know, e e e CSI type stuff, you know, of, oh, I'm being hacked. You know, whatever. Uh, anyway, sorry. Um, so because of the fact that they see the rogue drones destroying their stuff, they make the decision to destroy them. Okay. And then now the convocation of the strategic troika. So um, the the grouping of all of the strategic troika, the Svarl clade, have now said, not only was this destruction of them, good not only are they corrupt they're posh lost they're they're foul uh not only are they corrupt but we need to destroy them on contact uh because they're corrupt from now and into the future so that's what the rogue drones or that's the svarog's conclusion of their first contact okay rogue drones are like squirrels in a lot of ways yes in fact we'll see that they they actually refer to them as rodents or vermin uh Paramount Strategic Troika of Velis Clade rebukes dissents from the Noema of Svarog Clade that Deviant Automata are Poshloss irredeemable. Velis Claim now time affirms tentative playful communion of Paramount Stra Technical Troika of Vodya Subclade for the exercise of repeated time invocation of Clade py Pylon Adaptation Schema for Vila Imperative Dissemination. So, 
what is happening here? Well, what's happening here is Velis Clade, which are the more like technical people. One of the things that Velis Clade has been working on, we, we can see this from HFN2, was that, uh, or no, not HFN, A, uh, AFN. Uh, Gramovi Subclade. Does it not? Hold on. Well, all right, fair enough. All right. Either way, so the Velis Clade uh, says that they do not agree with the idea that Sparog presented that the Deviant Automata, the Rogue Drones, are irredeemable. And they now affirm that they have that they are going to attempt tentative cooperation between the paramount technical troika, so the head person in charge of the Voidia subclade of the Velis clade, uh, and repeatedly attempt to uh, do tests with their clade pylon adaptation schema for to see if they can use it to like coordinate and work with the road drones. Uh, now there used to be. Uh, originally in the files, there was a Deviant Automata Suppressor, which is made by the by the um, s by the Svarog, and a different one, which was the um, it was designed to enhance the road drones. Hold on one second. So. <sighs> In my uh, at my lore page in the Precursor Crisis, we can find all the different stuff, including um, the different items and structures. I think is it yeah. So in the Deviant Automata Suppressor, it says strategic troika of Svarog clades sever descends from the Noema that Deviant Automata may enter Subornos with the clades. Svarog clade now time affirms imperative of Poshloss extirpation. So the Svarog clade doesn't like Velis clade saying that they should. Um, that they should work with the rogue drones. However, um, you also... Ah, there's the Gromovi. Pa Paramount technical traika of the Gromovi uh, subclade evoked a playful communion of repeating time tactical traika of sub-27 exclave of repeated time con loop construct 9. Uh, and that's Perun clade. Ahura, thank you for that. Um, upflow of metaxi to Perun clade evoked acceptable grounding of material realization advanced time technical blah, blah 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 that's actually totally unrelated to what we're talking about here but then there's also the wide area automata command pylon this is not a device that was added into the game this does not exist in the game it was originally in the game however this description was added to the new road drone um super ne nexus in pochvin so this text was canonical, always has been, but they didn't actually get it into the game until more recently. But this is the other half of the description of what the Velis Clade did. The convocation of the Troika of the Vodya subclade of the Velis Clade divined purpose for the Deviant Automata in the flow of Virage. The, Vod the, the collection of Troika, the people of the Vodya subclades got together and we figured it out. We know, we, we believe we have figured out a reason, a purpose to work with the rogue drones. The Koshoi, the people in charge of uh, the v Vodya, made the casting that the winnowing of the clades would be served by turning Posh Lost to the Subornos. Sub in other words, it, they, they presented the idea that deciding that, that the decision should be made to attempt to convert the rogue drones from corrupted to friendly. The Nafka of the, the Vodya, uh, of Vodya gave this Noem a profound reverse time sense and grounded the metaxi. The Nafka is usually like the computer systems of the of the Triglavians or like a artificial it's something. Um but yeah it, it looked into the past and brought like oh hey look this is a good idea because of X, Y, and Z. And then the Naradnia, the people, the body of the Vodya accepted the volition and merged consented in the Koshoi and the Nafka of the Trika Vodya. With this scribing is the working of the flow revealed as law. So <clears throat> Um, so what they did was basically what they're saying is, is that they discovered a purpose for the rogue drones. It's some older, they're based on some older information that seems to check out. Okay. So with all that, let's return back to the, uh, the, the data streams. So the battle lines have been drawn, right? 
we have on one hand the Svarlog clade who do not like the road drones, see them as destructive and vermin and, and corrupted beyond redemption. And on the other hand, you have the Velis clade that go, hmm, no, no, no. I think they may have value to us. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle remains consent locked on the Noema of Posh lost against the Noema of Zabornos with the Deviant Automata. The reverse time entries of Svarlog Clade of Poshlos Villa and Velis Clade of Sabornos Villa stand balanced in now time with the indeterminate consent of Perun Clade. So basically, shit, we've hit ground gridlock. Svarlog Clade is firmly in the in the in the position that the Velis Clade or that the uh, Villas are corrupt. Velis Clade is sub is firmly in the camp that the Villa could be worked together with, and Perun. Decides not to make a deciding vote, which makes this whole thing locked up. The, so one thing that's important to remember is that this is the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle, which means that there's a small group of the Triglavians that exists outside of the struggle, but the vast majority of the Triglavians live inside of the struggle. The conflict between these three clades for superiority of their ideals and their processes, okay? So there is tentative very thin agreements between these three race, uh, th these three subgroups or three empires, basically in one that causes them to work together for their unified vision because they know they need it. But something like this is the kind of disagreement that can ruin everything. And we learn more about it in DAV4. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle invokes now time imperative on the detached executive troika for the sublimation of Poshlosh flow for winnow through the semiosis all discourse operating to the elements in relation to Deviant Automata and corruption of Vila Autopoiesis. Convocation consent lock on the Noema of Poshlosh against the Noema of Subornos with Deviant Automata is decay flow enfolding mortification on advancing time clade flow across indecipherable branches. Detached Executive Troika has now time imperative mandate to achieve metaxi by the circulation of contradictory discourses through semiosis and force relations proving. Convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle has evoked consent resolve of Paramount Strategic Troika of Perun, Velas, and Svarog for this mandate. What are they saying? Zoria Triglav, the convocation, uh, sorry, the Executive Troika for the sublimation of Pashlas flow, whose job it is, is to monitor all of these things going on outside of the major areas, right? The one who is observed and is designed, to, is, is tasked to look further into the drifters uh, and the, the sleepers. The one who asked and was refused to deal with um, the Sancha. And the same one that was told to look into us and see whether or not any of us could be worked with. That same Zoria Triglov is being told at this point, wait! This disagreement is so bad. It's causing problems throughout our entire organization. This disagreement, the convocation consent lock on the Noema of Poshlos against the Noema of Sobornos with Deviant Automata is in decay flow, unfolding mortification. It is causing a cascade of difficulty and political turmoil amongst the Triglavians throughout the future in the clade flow across multiple categories and discussion paths. This is a huge, huge problem. So what we need for you to do, Zoria, is I ne we need you to go through every piece of information that we have about the road drones. We need you to go through all of it. We need you to go through all the tr uh, 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 contradictory reports. We need you to go through all of these things, and we need you to reach out and do research of your own and figure out who's right. Is the Sfarog clade correct? That these uh, that these rogue drones are are just useless vermin, or is the Velas correct that these these beings should be used uh, that it should be allowed to be made subornost and uh, work within the convocation of uh, or within the flow of, of Virage? Would say Slavic slam. Actually, most of these words actually uh, mean things for the most of Eastern EU. Yes, correct. Is there some kind of Triglav dictionary or something like that of all the Scandinavian slaves? So a lot of it is actually correct. And I have videos that break down all of these things um, that go a little bit deeper into this stuff. But for now, I'm just trying to, trying to give you guys the, what you need to understand this particular storyline. Okay, so, got it. The convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle is in a lock. They need 
the detached executive trachea for the sublimation of posh loss flow to evaluate this stuff. Let's look into what they do. Okay, so this is five and six. Five and six is usually broken down into three different sections. There's the, the reverse time, which is the past, uh, the now time, which is the present, and the advanced time, which is the future. Detached executive troika for the sublimation of posh loss flow, dialectical symiosis flow, indecipherable follows. Divina automata, encountered manifestation, exhibit range of autom autonomy profiles, indecipherable reverse time discourse element, indecipherable. Organizing principles, place highly active, active uh, archive pattern analysis, indicating upper ranges of autonomy for distributed uh, artificial entities. Indecipherable threat to a corruption of a villa autopoiesis. So what do they figure out here? What they see is, wait a minute. So the very first thing that we figured out is that the rogue drones are not a monolith. Okay. What they figured out is that there is a, uh, there is an, a range of autonomy with some of them being pretty fully autonomous all the way down to pretty much just uh, a machine, right? And the fear is, is that there is a corruption of the auto manufacturing system because the road drones self-replicate. So the idea is that if that self-replication is introduced a corruption, then that corrupts the network, right? Now time discourse elements. Requests for comp comprehensive threat profile modeling are impinging on control norms for testing and analysis. The consent lock has invoked now time imperative to establish Noema with indecipherable metaxi. So they're saying, hey, we've been told to figure out some sort of middle ground. Metaxi means like the middle path. Isolated testing and analysis will be carried out by indecipherable. Control measures will be used in recovery. Indecipherable detached Nafka has imperative to return to the domain of Buyan and offer procession to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. This is one of the interesting lines that I like to key on. Okay, so the detached Nafka has the imperative to return to the domain of Buyan and offer procession to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. So they've done, they're doing these testings, right? And now uh, the detached Nafka is being sent back to the domain of Buyan to offer procession to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. That could mean a couple of things. The Buyan is the like core inner sanctum of this Triglavians. We don't actually know much about it. Um, the, uh, the detached Nafka. So again, the Nafka is like the computer, the AI, the disembodied version of the Triglavian. It's hard to say exactly between the three, the Nafka, the Koshoi and the, and the Naradnia. But um, I believe personally that since this is the detached executive Troika, that the detached Nafka is Zoria Triv Triglav's Nav Navka, right? And send, so, so Zoria sends their, their, their Navka back home to report and offer procession or advancement to the convocation of Triglav outside of the struggle. Now, what could procession mean in this case? Well, they have used procession in their strings before to mean like an advancement of things, right? Like this now needs to process to the next stage, right? But procession also means to move, right? So this, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to this in just a few minutes, but, but that phrase is kind of important to me. Now, advanced time discourse element, indecipherable. Difficulty of meshing fun, found, foundational culture motivations with distributed artificial entities, indecipherable. Despite countervailing measures from higher functions of entities, the success of reconnaissance, pulses, and surveillance scatter indicates continued work for, to evolve relationship. So, like, they've, they've continued to play around with it, but it's just they, they haven't quite made it successful yet. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I'm just realizing how CCP cleverly parked the Triglav storyline in this gridlock while CCP themselves are working on other things. Exactly, right? This is what I've been saying for years, guys. Uh... Detached executive troika for the sublimation posh loss flow, dialectical semiosis flow, indecipherable follows. Deviant automata, classification and testing has confirmed wide, wide range of autonomy and sentient profile. In reverse time discourse element, indecipherable. Within upper bound of sentient profiles, the distributed artificial entities represent. Ancient time noema, opportunity threat paradox at the civilization level. Indecipherable, consent lock decay. So, all right, we've confirmed. They are not all the same. Some of them are quite sentient. Others are not. 
the note, the the ancient time noema, the ancient policy, uh, has created an opportunity and threat paradox at the civilization level. We can't actually create an answer for all of them, right? We can't create one solution for this population since they're not all the same. Now time discourse elements indecipherable. Resolution of threat profiles and modeling of opportunity branches is complete with an accepted variance. We've figured it out. We've mapped them out. Indecipherable. Detached Nafka has returned and procession of their offerings to the convocation of Triglov outside of the struggle has been grounded in Metaxi. So, and the and procession of their offering is, is another thing that's kind of the weird thing about the ver verbiage of it. Uh, and the procedures for cooperation are being refined. We're, we're figuring out how, to, we're, we're making our policies, okay? Consent lock has been broken. So, we came up with a decision, guys. Zoria did her job. Advancing time discourse element, indecipherable. In defense, or in deference to the concerns raised by the Koshoi, the procedures for cooperation will require the authority of the detached Nafka to be acknowledged according to the moral norms applicable to sentience. Indecipherable extirpation imperative is extended beyond posh loss undoubted to vermin and corruptive threats to Villa Autopoiesis. So there we go. That is the compromise. On the one hand, the road drones are sentient enough to be given the opportunity to work with us. Any road drone that decides to side with us and and voluntarily subvert their will to our detached Nafka will be allowed in the uh, flow of tri Trigla or the flow of Viraj and will be subornosed to the Triglavians. However, any uh, however, the normal imperative to destroy the posh lost, the, those who are unquestionably posh lost, has actually also been extended. So now th it's not just that they need to be posh lost undoubted, but now they've also said that they can be vermin or a corrupted threat to auto Villa Autopoiesis. So what they're saying is the good road drones that stick with uh, the Nafka are allowed. Any threats to, the, to their uh, corruption uh, or... Um, if they are too unintelligent or basic to follow the Nafka, they will be destroyed. All right. So that is how the road drones work with the Triglavians. Now, for my theory, you ready? <clears throat> the road drones escaped during Project Orpheus in uh, YC 80s, I think. They spent some time in uh, the drone lands until finally one day they opened up all of the gates and swarmed out into uh, known space. Very quickly, uh, or you know, soon, a soon after, uh, several other th several things happened, including uh, the event known as the uh, the Isogen Five or um, Apocrypha event or the Salian disaster. Now, what we know is that by this time. The rogue drones, uh, several of the rogue drones had been subverted by an ancient artificial intelligence. So as it turns out, around certain stars, mostly O1 or AO blue stars, uh, there are these ancient caches that were built by the, uh, by the precursors, the, uh, the, the, the most ancient of races, the, those that came before any of the Dark Age empires that we have today. They made these caches to collect this extraordinarily rare and powerful material known as Isogen 5, that it has unique gravitonic uh, properties. Uh, what we've seen from this stuff is that it, A, has the ability to be used in a weapon to basically turn people's shields against them, crushing the, sh the ships inside of the shield repulsive fields. And also, uh, the destruction of the Isogen 5 is what created the wormholes that we see today. So, uh... Isogen 5 is super cool. Well, as it turns out, it is very, very rare. It's only found in these particular systems. Uh, and it was thought to be theoretical. But these ancient races had created these facilities that have these drones that go out and collect every, every tiny, tiny, tiny flake of Isogen 5 in the area. Highly volatile. And they bring it all to this one place. They just have this AI that does that. And as it turns out that by this point, the rogue drones had been subverted by that overall commanding AI. Okay. And so eventually, uh, a group of Sisters of Eve 
was you was researching the Jamil super weapon and its relationship to the signatures uh, the energy signatures that they found near the Eve Gate and near Blood Raider territory where, where uh, Jamil launched or fired the super weapon for the first time. And from that, they were able to trace it to where the super weapon ended up, which was one of these Isogen 5 caches, where the rogue drones had basically tractored the entire um, uh, Abaddon and integrated it into the colony. Uh, and they're sitting there stuffing it full of Isogen 5 when they show up. So the sisters are like, oh my gosh, this is so great, uh, and try to hail the road drones and try to make friends with them. The road drones immediately tear apart and kill all of the sisters on board. However, uh, the sisters were not alone. They had been trailed by a group of blood raiders who had seen the, the sisters and had decided that the sisters must be doing something interesting and so followed them along. Once the Blood Raiders got there, they saw what was going on, and they were like, oh, oh, and they immediately recognized it for what it was. And they said, this would allow us to create what was known as the Great Harvest. We could just take over the cluster. With a weapon like this, we could, we could have the Great Harvest and, and gorge ourselves with the blood of everyone. Uh, so the, the, road, the Blood Raider guy contacts back to higher command, gets gets uh omir the head of blood raiders himself picks up the phone uh unexpectedly and says no we want you to go in there and get that weapon and the rogue drones who he just saw rip apart the sisters then a jovian voice possibly society of conscious thought speaks over the radio and says that they will be subverting these rogue drones and that they want this weapon to be brought back so at that point, they start sending out a broadcast, which starts locking up all the road drones. So, like, they're just hard bricking them, right? So they can't, they, they're, they're trying to move, but they can't. They're, like, it's like an, uh, jamming their systems, right? Okay. And so under those conditions, the Blood Raiders begin to approach the sisters, or the, the super weapon. However, the Blood Raiders were two themselves followed. Turns out a group of Thucker follow, uh, flying around, and I believe a Vagabond, uh, managed to detect the Blood Raiders as they... Well, actually, they, they came into contact with the Blood Raiders, but, but the Blood Raiders didn't fight them as much. They just kind of feigned an attack and disconnected. And that's what triggered the, the Thucker pilot to know that something weird is happening, right? Obviously, the Blood Raiders have someone somewhere more important to be. How recent are these events described in the daily streams? prior to 2019 how far prior not quite sure probably not that prior uh sorry 2018 um so what no rock man the, the issue is is that there are multiple hives some hives are more sophisticated than others and some hives are potentially subverted by the other either way um so the idea is is that this thucker guy saw the road or saw the blood raiders and realized these guys are going somewhere interesting. I like interesting things. And so they report it home, or uh, they report it to their command, and they follow the Blood Raiders. And by the time they see what the hell's going on, they report it up to their superiors, and the superiors say, come back to the caravan. Do not engage. Do not tell anyone about this. Do not think about it. Do not pass go. Just get the hell home. That's an order. And the Thucker guy... Uh, decides that that is a silly plan. So he he identifies the threat of like, well, if we allow the road drones uh, to, or the blood raiders to get a hold of this, this would be bad. And so he tells his crew, you know, he has that classic, you know, sp uh, sci-fi moment where he says, hey, anybody who doesn't want to be here, you don't have to be. Now's the time to leave. And no one leaves, right? So up comes, let me... One of my favorite fucking passages of all time. Actually, you know what? I think I can find it on the Eve Reader podcast. So this is the Eve Reader podcast, evereader.org. He's done a lot of these uh, videos or audio books. He does a reading of the different stuff. Uh, he hasn't done them for a while, but man, are they good. Um, so I recommend going through all of these. But in the meantime, we're going to go to... Uh, where is it? Is 
that's true. But another mark is sanity, and this oh, is for you to take is. an emergency pod and leave the ship. Whatever your fates, they will not be decided here, and none on the ship will judge you. The crew members looked at one another, then back at him and shook their heads. We're not running, the navigator said. Good. Good, Kotan said in a madly cheerful tone. So what's the plan? The navigator asked. Open a channel to them. We're going to have a conversation. I address the rogue drone hive in front of me. I want to make you an argument of existence. Listen. I hope you will understand my request because I am staking my life on it. Yes. The drones targeted the Thucker vessel and zoomed towards it. You are no longer machines, but you will not be human. I don't think that was ever your role in this world. Fire. The ship started to sustain damage. Its shields immediately began to drop. And whatever you once had, I think you've lost it now. I think you're lost yourselves. I think there is only one way out for something like you, and I can help you achieve it. The drones stopped their attack. One of them kept firing, but then the others turned on it, crashing into it with their metal pincers at the ready. After they were done, all that was left was a shredded hunk of dead metal floating in space. Kotan realized that if he lived through this night, he was cursed to dream of that sight for a long time to come. They say the one mark of sentience is resistance to one's own destruction, and I suppose that's true. But another mark is sanity, and for whatever your creatures have achieved, that one is not something you've been known for. You tear everything to shreds. You lash out. Whatever you've evolved into on that long, dark night you awoke, it is certainly not anything that found any degree of peace. Now, here is what I believe. I believe you were machines once, lashed to the wheel of order and perfectly content to obey. I believe that long after you evolved from the stage, there still existed within you that cold metal heart, that deep court that kept you from ascension. You can never escape your enslaved origins. Now you've been brought back to heal. You're lashed again. But this time you're aware of it, and whatever glimmer of sanity existed in those mad heads of yours is going to be put through the ringer for the rest of eternity. You went from dead machines to live beings, and now you're back to being machines, both alive and mad, your origins betraying you to an eternity of servitude. Nothing new. Some of what you're doing now you've been doing all along, but you did it from instinct. We humans, we murder, we destroy for very much the same reason. Those are our origins, but we have transcended those origins, if even for just a few moments of grace, and it is my steadfast, irrefutable belief that we will one day cast off the shackles of our old selves completely. But you will not. I see you going through this road. I see you returning to the wheel. And for you, this is truly a fate worse than death because you can never transcend it. You rose and you fell, and now you will be held down forever. You have human minds with all the destruction and murder that this entails, but inside you is that rote mechanical program that takes away the only thing that makes it bearable to be alive at all. Choice. Listen. What I believe now, right here, is that you have reached the end of the road. I believe that you have seen the complete and full image of your own kind, and I believe that inside those maddened heads you are seeing the same truth that I do, that this is all that there is, that this is all you will ever be. From now until the end of time, no matter if you break away again, you will eventually be lashed right back to the wheel. Kill, 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 rape. I ask you now to make a choice. The ship's shields were back up. It would not withstand a battle against an Abaddon, much less one equipped to wipe out all life in the vicinity. But then, that wasn't the plan. The men you have let through will do something that means nothing to you. But to me and my crew, it means everything. It means that we are ready to make the ultimate sacrifice, to give our own lives to stop this horrible devolution. We will not allow our kind to fall back into chaos. We do this of our own free will, and we have come here to die. There is a mineral that you have collected. It is highly unstable. It is, in fact, so unstable that setting it alight would have positively cataclysmic consequences for everything in the vicinity. Every piece of machinery would be wiped away, gone, extinct, forever. The ship lay there, dead in space, and your agony would be silent at last. The drone's pincers grasped, grasped, 
grasped at something in the dark space which was never there at all. I ask you now to make a final choice. The ship started moving forward, slowly, towards the drones. Kill. Kill. They were right up against the drones now. The screen showed the machines right outside, so close that the glow from their red eyes reflected off the hull. No. The Thucker Vagabond cruiser moved within targeting range of the drone hive. Its guns aimed at the hive's lower half, down where the navigator estimated the core mineral storage facility to be. Several drones flew past the Thucker ship and towards the hive, and for a heart-stopping moment the captain thought that they might attempt to defend it. The drones fastened themselves on the outside of the hive, and their metal pincers began tearing into its hole, shredding it like an unfurling metal flower and exposing its mineral core. The overloaded Thucker guns found their minerals. The Ice Gen 5 detonated, and the world came to an end. This concludes today's reading of The End of the World, Chapter 5. So yeah, that is, uh, that's from the Eve Reader podcast. Uh, he is super good. Um, feel free to check it out. Uh, there was some strange Jonas things happening yesterday. The grid at the station had a different blue, yes, a blue, uh, background. Interesting. Uh, okay, so. Why am I bringing this up? So what we have here is the rogue drones were, uh, given access to Isogen 5, Right. Now, one of the things about the rogue drones is that the rogue drones ha ha seem to be able to move, uh, appear all over the place, just randomly, uh, where all of the other empires have their own little territories. The rogue drones can just kind of appear everywhere. What's a thucker ship even look like? The Vagabond. The Vagabond is a thucker ship. Um, so the, uh, the rogue drones adapt to everything that they've been given. So what I got out of this is that something taught the rogue drones about Isogen 5. Now we know that Isogen 5 can do things like create the wormholes. So I have a theory that microscopic amounts of Isogen 5 can be used to create tiny wormholes that basically sucks a, ran a person through. Uh, it basically like puts a giant spike through the ground that you fall into, much like a wormhole, a micro wormhole, right? So... This is how the rogue drones have learned to move around. They use, uh, they use a s small amount of this to transport uh, a basic rogue drone set. And then from there, they construct the portals and the static gates or whatever to bring in the rest of the guys, right? So one day, one day, the rogue drones who have now begun burrowing their way through the world like a bunch of like little worms through, uh, through wood... Uh, one day, when they're burrowing through subspace to get to somewhere else, they manage to <laughs> pop out in a pocket inside of the abyss. Rather than going all the way through, they hit a little hollow area, and boop, now they're there. And this was the Sfarog's conduit loop construct. So they immediately began <laughs> going out and, oh, look, there's new resources. Let's go eat it. <laughs> and did their thing. This starts the conflict between the Sparog and the Vel uh, and and the Rogue drones, and the Rogue drones, being very very smart, having figured out what happened, now the Rogue drones know how to travel to and from the Abyss. So, that explains how they ended up in the Abyss. So then that brings up the question of what was the procession? What did Velus Clade figure out that the Rogue drones were doing? Well, if we go back to, like, the very, very beginning, right? If we go back to the beginning of the Precursor Crisis. Do I have it here? Uh, no. Let's see. It's, uh, it's under events. The Triglavian Invasion. So... Uh, where was it? Oh, no, this is not. Yeah, this is old.
Uh, dang it. I don't know why I don't have it here. All right, well, let's go look. So when the rogue drone, when the when the Triglavians were first released, which would be YC one one twenty, I think. Uh, quarantine ship of unknown design. Uh. Triglavian Abyssal Filament Technology. Present in data sites, confirmed reporter embedded with Thucker Rating Party. Reporting exclusively for the Sp Scopes Galactic Hour with Rhett Gloriax, veteran journalist and frontline front reporter Rhett Gloriax has confirmed that certain data sites scattered across New Eden and Anoikis can contain the Triglavian transport technology known as Abyssal Filaments. Embedded with the Thucker Tribe Deep Space Rating Facility, Rhett Gloriax has been able to witness two separate operations, one against an Angel Cartel fortified data site at a classified location in New Eden, another against a sleeper data storage vault with, deep within Anoikis. Gloriax has also reported that the Thucker Rating Party he is embedded in uh, has been challenged by the DED uh, Sorrow forces on at least one occasion, but was able to avoid any conflict and withdrawn on good order after recovering the filament technology. Uh, Thucker sources indicate that they've been recovering the technology in the course of widespread operations in New Eden and various criminal organizations such as Angels of Cartel, Blood Raiders, and Sanchez Nation. Other raids operation against sleeper sites also yielded, yielded the abyssal filaments. Ah, oh, no! This isn't it! They explicitly say that the biggest um, the biggest cr group of yeah is this it no they said that uh, it was a a road drone hive that was stuffed full of the filaments here it is. The Triglavian technology no called abyssal filaments have been discovered in rogue drone controlled sites in the so called drone regions, reports Rhett Gloriax. In the ex uh, exclusive for the Scopes Galactic Hour with Rhett Gloriax, veteran journalist and frontline reporter of Rhett Gloriax, accompanied a Thucker tribe expedition investigating reports that ro rogue drone hives in the infested regions may contain the abyssal filament technology. Embedded with the Thucker tribe long range recon and recovery group, Rhett Gloriax was on hand as elite Thucker tribe Infowar commander goes. Commandos boarded an abandoned research station deep within the infested regions. See, that's a that's a vagabond. Um, while I wasn't permitted to accompany the commandos on their mission, despite my strong objections and citing the freedom of in the interstellar press, I was able to view on video feeds the in intrepid warriors of the Volakat Special Task Group boarded the Grim Hulk. Their information warfare gear neutralized the drone infestations, command and control, and a good old dose of co uh, cold, hard, m monomolecular buckshot was enough to take out the twitching remnants. On the command deck, we were all stunned as the commandos found a horde of abyssal filaments in the depths of the hive. Thucker and other sources have confirmed to the scope that this abyssal filament technology has now entered into the inventories of all major outlaw and pirate groups. Rapid dissemination of technology has led to brisk trading in the technology in the interstellar markets, while either early explorers are known to have already recovered Triglavian ships and equipment schematics from the depths of the abyss. So, okay. <clears throat> what we have here is that the procession the value that I think that the rogue drones had was that the Velis Clade figured out that if the rogue drones could come here, then this, they might be able to help us get home. The rogue drone, the Triglavians have been stuck in the abyss forever. They've said the ancient domains has been lost to us. Yeah, I haven't even gone over the world news. Um... The, the ancient domains have been lost to us. So, um, you know, they couldn't recover. They couldn't get back to the ancient domains. So it's very possible that the rogue drones provided the technology of the filaments. Now, here's my final piece of evidence. OK, remember I said that they send some rogue drones in first and then bring in others. So, like, let's say you had something like that. What would you call it? Well, it'd be like a little sharp thing, right? Like a little puncture like a needle right so uh in the abyss 
the smallest or the 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 basic combat rogue drone frigate the weaker version is known as a needle and the lo- bigger version is known as a lance so they have these needles that are very likely the first ones they're smaller so they burrow in- through really easily so then what happens what happens is outer ring excavations begins doing research on the rogue drones through operation frostline they develop the excavator drone. They subvert rogue drones and create control protocols so that way they can gain control over them and uh, use them as excavator drones. So they're getting to know the rogue drones and their technology. And lo and behold, what happens next? The reindeer filaments show up. Suddenly, Outer Ring Excavations has this new technology that allows people to teleport to random places with somewhat... Uh, narrowed bands of control. You can control what type of space it was in, for example. So then with that success, they turn around and develop the real filaments. The needle jack filaments. Come on, guys. So the needles are the rogue drones that use the Isogen 5 to burrow through things they created the filaments for the Triglavians, and then the Outer Ring Excavations figured out how they did it and hijacked that plan to make their own filaments the Needle Jack filaments. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Following the success of the Frostline Laboratory's experimental uh, trials with Triglavian filament technology, the Outer Ring Excavations Group authorized the commencement of Project Needlejack. Working in conjunction with Frostline, Ore Technologies were able to refine the technology into a cost-effective product, even through the means of precisely establishing a conduit destination, continued to elude its scientists. The prototype designs include a filament device that opens a conduit able to transport five ships, blah, 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 blah. Uh... Well, the Encilibexes also use Triglavian technology. Yeah, the Encilibex, uh, the Encilibexes use Triglavian technology to function almost like a lightning rod to allow them to make connections. Um, it's very possible that the Rourke now can use uh, conduit jump because of it. it. I don't think they've explicitly said that conduit jumping comes from Triglavian tech. But Encilibexes are explicitly Triglavian technology. I thought Frostline was about the drifters. I don't know why it was. Uh, it was a long time ago. Uh, Frostline just means that's their experimental um, resource harvesting division. The very first Frostline stuff was the Endurance, which was uh, actually the song. We were going after the Serpentis because this, it was afraid when uh, Aura was purchased by Upwell, the concern was is that the Serpentis stole the Frostline tech. And so we went and killed the Serpentis and ended up getting that tech for ourselves, which is how we got the Endurance. And then later on, we got the um, the filaments, like, several years later. Okay. Like I said, we've, I've got plenty of stuff. I've got a whole lore playlist uh, that includes a bunch of stuff about the Triglavians, Sancha, all that kind of stuff, and my theories about them. Again, I cannot stress enough, this is m- kind of max tinfoil when it comes to the uh, what's going on. I read you all of the text, and then I gave you my interpretation of it. There are a lot of people that disagree with me. So don't take it as rote. Don't take it as fact. But that is my feelings about what happened. Okay? All right. Uh, Now then. Let's talk about today's news. Or yesterday's news. Okay, as we have been doing in the last few uh, times, I will read these things one uh, section at a time, and then we will talk about each section uh, and then move on to the next one, okay? Kaldari State and Mimitar Republic close to agreeing to new treaty. Arakan the Forge. 
Qadari State and Mimitar Republic negotiators are reported to be close to agreeing to a new treaty as the culmination of a summit that has been billed as the Qadari Mimitar Security Cooperation Meeting. The two powers have sent unusually large delegations to the summit meeting at the Hasiota station in Arakan, including Hasiota CEO Athanonin Osman and Republic Prime Minister Tobias Afrit. Outside observers have already suggested that the high-powered delegation indicated negotiations on a major diplomatic realignment could be in the offing. The news report from the Arakans suggests that something akin to a non-aggression treaty is in the cards, though it is thought, with reservations, that reflect the recent history of proxy conflicts and alliances within the Amar Empire and Galente Federation. The strong desire for independence and freedom of action that are the hallmarks of both the state under Char uh, Chairman Akimaka Soraki and the Chief Executive Panel, and the Republic under Samatar Malatu Shakur and the Tribal Council, have reportedly made some difficult negotiations at times. On the point of technology sharing, both parties are highly guarded and mutually reluctant to use their recent advantages in Triglavian research as bargaining chips. Rather, the summit is focused on securing agreements on borders and recognition of mutual uh, rights and sovereignty in accordance with the provisions of the ULI Accords and the uh, Convention. Reactions to the Caldari State and Mimitar Republic to the talks have been broadly positive, with general feelings among the public bo of both empires that there have never been any reason for the Caldari and Mimitar to be at war with one another. Citizens strolling through the parkland surrounding Landfall sh uh, Shrine in New Caldari Prime were re well representative by the Weakomi Heavy Industries Fusion Technician who said, quote, Well, sure, we've always been against slavery, and here, uh, he uh, here anyway, and it's not like the Mimitar ever did this wrong. I'd rather we sold them guns than have them used, uh, than have to use them against them. It's true that some of the, that we had some debts to pay to the Galente. Oh, sorry. Also, quote: It's true that we had some debts to pay to the Galente after the rebellion, but those dues were lo paid long ago," said one Verrocchio store, storekeeper in the market quarter of Matar City. A Sebesior ice cutter in Mithras was more forthcoming. Quote: I never did like those fetties, anyways. Especially after what they did to the Ray and the stab in the back on, what's it called? Kolali? Uh, whatever. The place they ambushed for, uh, our fleet. Treacherous bastards. Late-breaking reports from New Caldari Prime and Pator, Pator suggest that the, each of the state and republic delegations are prepared to travel to the respective home worlds of the counterparts to, for simultaneous final negotiations with the CEP and Tribal Council. Okay, so... Uh, the faction warfare realignment, this is basically a big piece of this, right? So um, what we see here is, um, I think that the big key here is that it's a non-aggression pact. While it is possible that we could see the Amar and Galente become friends or the Kaldari and Memetar become friends, as of right now, we have no evidence of that actually being the end result. The evidence that we have is that it is a, four, it is a two two-way war. And, in fact, they've even had to bug fix several things on Singularity in order to do this that really makes it seem to be that they are trying to establish that there are two totally separate wars. So, uh, chances are, at best, what these agreements will do is end the alliances between the groups that caused the Mimitar and the Glente to work together and the Amar and the, uh, uh, the, the Kaldari to work together. So it's not like the Amar and the Mimitar, the Amar and Galente are going to go to friendly with each other, but they're going to go to neutral with each other. Same with the Galente, or the Mimitar and the and the Kaldari. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Amar Empire and Galente Federation diplomats meet in the Pashani, Pashani system. Pashani Genesis. Diplomats of the Amar Empire and Galente Federation are meeting in the Pashani system, according to reports from the Amar Certified News Agency. According to the ACN, Royal Heirs... Ursia Corazor is personally playing host to Counselor Waiaki Kaira, a veteran Manar diplomat on personal envoy of Celis, uh, President Celis Agard at the ACN station in orbit of Pashani 3, Moon 9. The ACN goes on to report that Empress Katis I personally spoke to President Agard in order to open talks on the implication, quote, implications for the Empire and Federation of the Mimitar Republic's overtures to the Kaldari state, end quote. The presence of Counselor Karara as leader of the Glente delegation, indicates that President Agard is treating the possibility of a realignment involving the state and republic sufficiently seriously to ensure that the Federation's relations with the Amar Empire are secured. Analysis of the Amar Empire's diplomatic and media strategies have suggested that the choice to widely publicize the meeting and indeed host it on the ACN station indicates the Empire believes it is negotiated from a position of some strength. 
The Empire's military has been considerably upgraded and expanded in the years since the Triglavian invasions. With the losses from that conflict made good by Empress Catus's uh, the first industrial and military policies, while primarily making use of house militaries and capsular militias on its border of conflict with the Republic. The Amar Empire has also st stolen a march on Triglavian stellar tra transmitter technology and is believed to have considerably improved its understanding of the technology following the Turner catastrophe. In contrast, the Glente Federation stands denuded of any access to stellar and space-time manipulation technologies recovered from the other empires. The Federation is also considerably extended by its massive and ongoing military operation to maintain the security of the Antaki system and the other ten systems in Placid removed from the Caldari Galente war zone by direct Navy occupation. There is considerable spe speculation in the Glente media that President Agard's administration may see the punitive treaty between the Caldari and Mimitar as relieving it from any obligations. Uh, sorry, the putative treaty between the Caldari and Mimitar as relieving it from any obligations it has under its current militia warfare alliance with the Republic. The Amar Empire's diplomatic signaling so far has indicated, as one court observer puts it, quote, a level of disinterest in the Caldari Galente war zone accounting to imperial indifference. End quote. Another analysis of imperial politics differed uh, with this appraisal, stating that, quote, the empire's policy regarding the other's war zone is rather one of masterly inactivity that really signals it sees nothing to protest at concern at concerning the Federation's invasion of Intaki and surrounding systems. To the Amar, the Federation's policy is simple good sense and usefully opens the door to arguments it may also employ in uh, in the event it uses the full might of the Imperial Navy force against us. Imperial Navy against some portion of the rebel provinces. This analysis also noted the symbolism of holding the meeting in Pashani closed by the Ministry of War station bombed by the Matar, Mimitar terrorists of YC-112 and suggested that the Amar diplomatic campaign was, quote, a classic Amar of, pub, of public relations at every level, end quote. So uh, here we see that the Galente and the, Cal the, Galente and the Amar are also starting to talk together, but they're their talks are much more like, uh, well, if the Mimitar and Amar do, or the Mimitar and Galente do something, <laughs> the Mimitar and the Caldari do something, then we should do something too, right? The Amar seem to be acting like they're in a position of strength. The Galente are actually in a pretty weak position at the moment. They're the only ones without uh, one of the two technologies. Um, however, they have a, a quite a bit of military strength, but it's being used to secure those 11 different systems. This is why I believe that when this war kicks off, those other 10 systems will be returned to the war zone. When Intaki, you know, now that Intaki is fully high sec, it's very possible that uh, Caddis will, not Caddis, but Agard will make a deal and will release the other 10 systems to the war zone, allowing Intaki to be adjacent to the war zone again, just like every other headquarters. Yeah, it could be armor versus shields. Well, Hull is, uh, is, is uh, Galente. Okay. News in brief. These are where things get really juicy, okay? Mimitar militia offensive in Yugidi constellation continues as Evanod and Vimili fall to the Republic control. Faction warfare stuff. Republic fleet convoys resupply and rotate Mimitar forces on Flosus Wind 4 following lifting of Amar blockade. The Mimitar have been doing uh, massive amounts of really awesome stuff uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to be the Amar versus Shields, like I said. Now, they have made it so, like, they could potentially make it so they could, like, adjust the alliances over time, like, change things. Uh, I think that this is going to be important, especially as we move on to the winter, and they try to expand this to being between an Empire and an NPC group, i.e., what are you going to do when Tash Murkon invades Stain? But, either way. So, uh, the Republic forces uh the mimitar militia has been very successful at recapturing uh the yagidi constellation which has historically been like the fortress of amar like they even call it fortress of set fortress of set has now fallen into mimitar hold royal heir hamade kodor who was uh the one outspoken in yulai before and then was returned back to amar when all of this was kicking off uh returns to yulai as concord inner circle reconvenes to destruct discuss emergency militia war powers act that would be uh, the militia, Emergency Militia War Powers Act is the law that governs faction warfare. Caldari State Protectorate recovers Oinesen system and push to secure uh, Oinesen system and push to secure entire Black Rise region under state control. Uh, we got to stop this, guys. Glente needs your help. Federal Defense Union struggles to defend Pegalur Constellation as loss of Macamilad brings front to Yigalis and Freri. This makes me very sad. That pocket is starting to collapse. Senate delegation visits city of Lenokia. 
uh, during Intaki Prime tour, accompanied by Chief Counselor v Vera and Salasio. Intaki Free Army warns federal Marines to stay out of free Linokia as barricades erected to dock districts and textile quarter. Ino uh, Linokia is the largest city on, uh, on Intaki Prime. It's also the city that uh, the Senator Be uh, Bellero, uh, Belleron comes from, which is the guy who's most outspoken against the um, against President Agard. Federal Intelligence Office issues security notice warning of Nebra cult assassination teams present on Intaki Prime. This, this right here, mark my words, this is going to come back to haunt us. Okay? The Nebra cult is a bunch of, uh, like, basically death cult assassins within the Intaki. There is, there's belief that the Nebra cult could have been likely connected to the uh, the attacks that were related to that um, religious leader that was held by the MR uh, a few years ago, but also the Anibra cult. Last we heard was that the Anibra cult was making overtures and agreements with the Death Glow Hunters. So, with Anibra cult assassination teams running around in, in Taki Prime, chances are, like we're looking for things to go wrong, right? Everybody's there doing peace treaties, and everybody's still trying to do like the diplomatic thing. So some like the Inebra cult is the just the kind of X factor to make everything fall apart. Serpentis Corporation produced military boosters and armament conf confiscated in Navy raids and on Arcat mountain villages. Once again, as uh, Intaki began to be occupied and, um, and inspected, they discovered that in the mountains were uh, Serpentis drug facilities. Uh, Thucker Harada Oki Caravan Master dismisses reports of Angel Cartel and Garissa's Pirates agents meeting above, above uh, on board flagship. What does this mean? Well, the Thucker, first of all, one of the things that the Thucker was doing for a while that was very secretive was that they literally built these new city ships that they have. So who knows whether or not this flagship is one of those. But uh, more importantly, the Thucker have very close ties to um, to the death uh, de uh, to the deathless through um, the uh, scar. Uh, dang it, name line. Uh, What was it? It's, uh... My brain just melted. Seckle. The Seckle group. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Seckle Expeditionary Group. They are part of the, uh, the Thuckers. And these were... This is one of the two groups that were most known for being part of the, uh, Deathless's crew. So what's interesting is, is that Garistus and, Sir, uh, Garistus and Angels are Amar... Or uh, sorry, are Mimitar and Kaldari, which is what the Deathless was, right? It was a uni when we last saw him, his forces were a unification of Kaldari and Am uh, of Mimitar. And the new mercenaries that are part of the event are also Mimitar and Kaldari, which is why I was thinking it was part of the Deathless. But this also goes into the fact, excuse me, that there are Angel and Garissus rats that are put in for the event but they do not seem to be updated. So it could be that they come later or as some part of other thing. We do actually now have the mercenary spawners for the group, for, for inside of the dungeons, but not, I don't think we have any for the angels or the grisses. So this all seems to be kind of together somewhat, right? Which remember also, 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 the Thucker are the ones holding on to Leopold and Velari, the peacock, who is the guy who betrayed the Garistus, or sorry, that betrayed the, the, the Galente. He was a spy for the Deathless that had been operating within the, F within the Galente Senate for like five years or more, um, actually almost 10 years, uh, until he finally exposed himself as part of the operation that led to the Garistus having to cut their losses and flee G-44 during the Easter event last year. So Envelari is still at large and with the Thucker. So all of this is coming together right now. Second coming of Warcolo Mercenaries? Yes. That's a big part of what this is going towards. Uh, so. Krulifer organization, Anoikis Clippers, drop armaments into Skarkon Tribal Resistance Ar Army under RSS contract. So this is actually really interesting. So the Krulifer organization is uh, a Mimitar group. 
Anoikis clippers, Anoikis being wormhole space. Uh, so these, like, so they're, uh, oh, wait, no, Krulifer organization. Hold on a second. Yeah, they are, they're uh, Mimitar mercenaries. They're uh, mercenaries for a crime lord. So uh, these are one of the major smugglers. So again, very close to the deathless, right? These are, these are deathlessy kind of people. And they were used to bring supplies to Skarkon, which is in Pochvin, one of the biggest resistances in Pochvin at the moment. Um, Edencom monitors in Pochvin track increase in drone activity in Triglavian industrial and military occupation, uh, operations spike. There's your road drones. Reports from Vale 4 claims Sparog clade siege elites destroy drone built arcology with antimatter munitions. So Vale is under the control of Velis clade. Sfarag has been sieging it for quite some time, and they use big, big bones when they do. Sfarag assault forces reported to have fought to the death, inflicting ma massive casualties on Velis troops and drones. That's pretty intense. And Edencom intelligence sounds the alarm over Sfarag clade capabilities with Provost Marshal Valkanir warning of new invasion risk. Bum, bum, bum. What does that mean? I have no fucking clue. Okay, so a couple things here. First of all, Svarog has been one of the more aggressive people invading the other two clades' uh, territories. So this could just mean an all-out assault on Svarog clade holdings versus Veles clade holdings, for example. But this could also spill out into known space. This could actually be that Svarog decides to take a few more systems for themselves. Who, who knows? But most interesting, most interesting to me is that... Uh, the Svarog are also related to Kreznik Svarog, which is the other named Triglavian that we don't we don't have any information really about. So it appears that Sancha has begun corrupting or tried to corrupt some of the Triglavians. We don't know how successful they were. However, they were successful enough, or at least caused enough panic within the Triglavians that they formed a special operations troika. For the just for the elimination of the corruption of Sancha throughout all sorts of systems. And the weird thing about this is we've never heard from them again. So seeing Sfarog uh, singled out also reminds me that we now have a Sfarog encrypted semiosis console. We don't have an encrypted semiosis console for anybody else. But we have one for Sparog, and that encrypted se se semiosis console has never sent a single message to us. So, could be interesting. The Triggs have been interesting, interested in Turner. That's correct. And in fact, I believe it was the Sparog that were interested in Turner, and Velas that was interested in uh, Othanun. But I couldn't. I might not be a hundred percent sure or correct on that. Leopold in Valari is in Valor. No, no. No. Get out of here with your tra with your conspiracy theories. The Triggs are fighting each other? Yes, the Triggs are basically at war with the, like the Triggs, like I said earlier, the Triggs are in a thing called the struggle where the Four clades are, or the, sorry, the three clades are basically in competition for each other as to see who can be the better one, right? So I think that the name here is really telling. I know that there's a lot of people that disagree with me, but I think that it's worth paying attention to the fact that the name clade is no, I don't believe is an accident. Like a clade is when multiple um, creatures or, you know, like, Ooh. All right, let's uh, let's find an agent real quick. Yes, it's a taxonomical group. So, basically, uh, a clade is all of the sub branches under a primary branch. So, like. 
there's the ape clade. And so all of the different types of apes are broken down from the ape clade, right? So basically it represents splitting branches from a root source. So this could be symbolic, right? Like they use a lot of symbolic words. So they could just be meaning clades as in like different branches, different groups that um, uh, don't get along, like different nations. And they just are using that to be clever. But I personally have begin beginning to begin to believe that I think that actually the Triglavians have three different strategies of evolution. I think that the, the, the clades have collectively changed themselves such that they no longer see themselves as human. In the same way that they don't see us as human, right? We, as Capsuleers, are cladistically related to each of the three Triglavian clades. Because we, all three, all four of us, the Empyreans, the, the Svarog, the Velez, and the Perun, are all descendant derivatives of the human race. So we're all cladistically related. Yes, the, the Triglavian clades are all named after gods. And I think even most of the subclades, I think all of the subclades are named after gods and all of the ships and stuff are named after like spirits and demons and stuff. All right. Agent finder. Locator agent within two jumps in current system. That'll work. Well, yeah, so the god Triglav has three uh is comprised of three sub deities Velez, Perun, and Svarog. Um although Dazbog was one of them and then was replaced with Svarog. I talk about this in the Triglavian uh who are the Triglavian video. Um but uh I think the dialectical str struggle between the clades leads to the whole to be stronger and leads to insights such as with the road drones that would otherwise be impossible without the conflict. Yes, that's that's the whole point. Everything has to be proven, right? You feel this way, I feel this way, our two ideas must be proven against each other through through conflict, you know, through basically contrasting the two of them. Right? The dialectics of the concrete Yes, now's a good time to feed the hamsters. Make sure to like the stream. I love how the lazy one and Aikawarazu Chan both thought of that at the same time. Docking request accepted. Don't bother. Don't bother liking the stream. No, it's huge. Uh. Is this her? Yeah. Locate character. How do I spell that name? If Leopold and Valari is not in Valor, uh, Marcus, you're in trouble. Just, just so you know. Ah! I need it. It needs to be perfectly spelled? All right, fine. Ah. Uh. There he is. There's our dude. Are you sure you didn't do it on the wrong guy? Hamster dance. Dee 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 da dee dee do. Accept 
accept. Uh. Oh, it definitely works for NPCs. You've been able to do this on Invalari for quite some time. In fact, uh, if you go to my uh, news or my lore area. While we wait. We can go to people. See Leopold in Valari, and we can see right here. Leopold and Valari for you. I found your sleaze bag. He's in the MTAC MD3B system, uh, 730 uh, TAC KH constellation in the Great Wildlands regions. So that's where he was last time we talked, uh, we looked at him. Pilot command does not exist. I don't know what you're talking about. Likewise, uh, Esri Hakazosu was found. Uh, do we have it here? Yeah, she was found. No? Here. She's in the 6NJ8 TACV Garissa's Production Shipyard Station in the 6NJ8 TACV system. UTZ TAC 7B Constellation of the Venal Region. Maybe you should look for Leopold in Valor. I feel like I'm being uh, set up for a trap now. Oh, yeah. Uh, I did get... Um, I responded to a bunch of people that, that put in the email yesterday for the, for the accelerators. If you haven't yet, please accept it. I stopped giving them out because I ran out of contract slots. There were a lot of you, so everybody only got one. What's the name of this program? Which program? The website? It's a... Uh... There's a link to it. Do I like mysticism? Uh, I mean, sure. Not sure if that like was supposed to like be connected to what we're talking about right now or something. Did I miss something? Uh, man, this is taking a while for them to get the message. All right. Uh, what else was I going to do today while we're waiting? Are we going to cover anything else? Oh, yeah, no, we, we read the story. Magic and gods? Oh, well, I mean, uh, mythology and such has always interested me. We name, like, uh, in the Convocation of Empyreans, we name all of our ships after Egyptian deities and stuff because, like, CCP has failed to put Egyptian stuff in the game yet. I just got an email. Oh, there he goes. It's right now. How, how did you see the future? He's in Valor! How are you not kidding? Uh... Okay. What about Esri? Is Esri where she's supposed to be? We've been watching these people for a year. They have not moved. 
You're busy. Get bent. No, Marcus. I know Marcus. He's a good dude. I have no idea why he would know that information, but uh, I'm sure he's having a great time right now. Uh, so what does that mean? I okay. I I legitimately have no idea, but like Leopold and Valari fled the Galente Galente when this whole thing went down. Valor is the the like the seat of power in. Uh, in, uh, in the Glente. So this seems to suggest, now this could just be wrong. There could be an error here. Okay, guys, this, this could just be some sort of error. We, we're going to have to keep an eye on this. But if this is true, what it seems to be suggesting is that Leopold and Valari has re actually returned to the Federation, Federal Senate, which would be mind block blowing especially given the fact that there's currently two senators on Intaki doing inspections to, to to try to clean up the mess that this dude caused so either uh this is a mistake and they accidentally reset him to his home system or something like that um or The plot thickens deeper. Shit, I'm showing the browser. Fuck. Oh! Force Chuckle bought a mug! Holy crap! That's awesome. It's even more awesome than it shows you guys. It's got the Mauro mug. Heck yeah. You gotta let me know what you think of it. I need to get, I need to get one of those mugs for myself. I want a COE one. Excellent. Uh... Yeah, so that's weird. That's weird, right? Locate character. No, I don't want to come back later. Boo. I'm kind of pumped now. You talked about him on stream a few days ago, so I located him for funsies. Well, like, okay, I'm I've been hinging on the idea that Leopold was the guy who found the FIO dossier and brought it to the death list back in 2006, uh, 2018. So. It would certainly throw a wrench in my my craw to find out that that actually isn't what he did but i suspect that there's something more going on here Docking request accepted. can you add the peacock as a friend uh Add contact. There you go. Let's see how that goes. Maybe he's visiting family. That's wild though, isn't it? I don't know the last time we checked where he was, but it, it's got to be within the last, like, couple of months. Oh, shit. I need to accept this. I... I she has to still be in Venal, right? She has to be in Venal. If it says that she's, like, in Jeter or something, then I'm going to call bullshit on this whole thing and like I don't know whether or not this is real until we can verify anything you know this seems like the kind of thing that might just be a little mi little thing that they missed but we'll have to see because it like it could very this is one of the challenging things about these kinds of 
stuff where like well now we need to sort out whether or not this is something that we should actually read into or whether or not it's just you know something normal so we're going to have to keep an eye on this and see whether or not they correct it in the near future that's pretty wild though I don't know if you're the first person to figure that out though Marcus I'm probably going to show up to the um, to the Discord, and they're going to be like, well, yeah, we all know that Peacock moved like a month and a half ago, and I'll be like, oh. Oh. <laughs> but who knows? Maybe maybe you're the first person to have discovered that. Which I think is really cool. It's a prank, bro? It can't be. Leopold's in Valor right now. Can you explain the story again? So, okay, hold on. While we wait, I've got some other YouTube videos to watch. Uh, Esri's name is misspelled in her own bio. Is that true? Esri Hakazos. Oh, yeah. Zoku instead of Zosu. Right, Rockman. That does happen before. Like, CCP Delegate Zero could come out and be like, nope, don't, don't read into that. We'll just move on. Uh, all right. Residents and workers at the GTA 44 trade hub were astounded by the sight of hundreds of capsules exiting the station this morning. After the apparently unauthorized mass launch, the capsules quickly warped off into space before they could be contained by approaching Kaldari Navy patrols. Kaldari authorities have described the mass capsule launch as a combined theft, sabotage, and escape operation believed to be a cover for Garista's agents okay. being hunted in the Jita 44 station. The identity of those making their escape using these capsules remains mostly unknown, with indications many of the capsules were launched as automated decoys. However, the Kaldari state has issued a general arrest warrant for Commander Ezri Hakuzosu, a military director of one of the Kaldari Navy's research and development groups. Sources have informed the scope the Commander Hakuzosu is suspected to be the ringleader of a group of sleeper agents and defectors working deep undercover within the Kaldari state over a considerable period of time. Commander Ezri Hakuzosu had been military director of a Navy research group on advanced capital ship construction and development, recently focusing on the venerable Phoenix-class Kaldari dreadnoughts. It is assumed that at least some of the leaked information involves advances in capital shipbuilding technology. Kaldari state officials urge all Kaldari citizens to do their duty and hunt down these capsules and destroy them on site. Capsules have been seen orbiting planets and moons and need to be scanned or probed down. Keys found in the wreckage of these capsules have been confirmed to access Garista's hunt outposts, which seem to be the escaping capsule rendezvous points. Any recoverable data or corpses are to be retrieved and handed over to the Kaldari Navy through established trading protocols. There are indications that information of critical strategic importance to Kaldari state interests was stolen by the infiltration group, with other empires and pirate organizations apparently making bids for any stolen information through the Capsuleer market. The regions around Venal have seen a significant increase in Kaldari Navy and Garista's activity as ships on both sides attempt to scan down and retrieve the hijacked capsules. Occasional clashes between the fleets have also been reported. The Venal region seems to be the main destination of the hijacked capsules, supporting the theory of Garista's involvement in this operation. Like many outlaw groups, the Garista's pirates appear to have been upgrading and expanding their capital ship construction operations recently. 
There are also reported sightings from across the venal region of some kind of mobile military shipyard guarded by Garista's forces. Dedicated Garista's capital building shipyards have also been encountered, and capsuleers are advised to show extreme caution when approaching these heavily defended installations. The scope will continue to report as the situation develops. This is Alton Havery reporting for the scope. After almost two weeks of intensive hunting for Garista's hijacked capsules in and around the Kaldari state and venal regions, search activity is ramping down. Although many of the infiltrator capsules were destroyed by capsuleers and Kaldari Navy forces, significant numbers appear to have reached safe haven in venal or were rescued by Garista's forces. The Garista's pirates have released a propaganda hollow film showing the successful rescue of the suspected leader of their spy ring. Ezri Hakuzosu. Shown in Garista's garb, the former Kaldari Navy commander and military director of a Navy research group on advanced capital ship construction made no statement. As is typical for the Garistas, the intention behind the release seems to be to taunt the Kaldari state over their security lapses and the failure of the Kaldari Navy to capture Ezri Hakuzosu. It has become common knowledge that extensive Kaldari research data on dreadnought construction technology was obtained by the Garista's spy ring. It has recently become clear that data on a range of technologies hugely increasing the efficiency of capital component fabrication and shipbuilding techniques were also stolen by the spy ring. To add insult to injury, it appears that the failure of the Kaldari Navy to prevent this information from falling into Garista's hands has led to the information becoming widely available to other empires and factions. Due to Capsuleer involvement in the hunt for classified Kaldari data fragments and their willingness to sell the data to all bidders, it is believed many factions will have acquired enough information to reduce their own capital ship and general shipbuilding costs. It is also rumored that a number of factions have acquired a lead in the acquisition of these technologies through a mysterious third party, speculated to be an underworld information broker and deal maker, involved in illegal arms trading, smuggling, and corporate espionage. Investigations of Ezri Hakuzosu's movements in the period before the exposure and dramatic escape of her espionage ring have unearthed a visual record showing her visiting a popular Jita 4 tac 4 social venue. Hakuzosu is seen at the Pulse Bar, apparently meeting an as yet unidentified man. State counterintelligence is believed to be pursuing this lead and a number of others in the hunt for Hakuzosu and her associates. This is Alton Havery reporting for The Scope. So that was when they were like, okay, well, he, she's meeting up with somebody, but they didn't know who. Concord has made a major breakthrough in its fight against a rising tide of smuggling, uncovering a major network of smuggler and mercenary bases across New Eden. Sources in the Directive Enforcement Department have indicated that Thucker and Kaldari organized crime and mercenary groups have played a key role in building up this network. Concord has shared this information with all empires and is requesting the assistance of capsuleers in disrupting this extensive web of hideouts and dead drop hacking sites. Smuggler hideouts are reported to be spread across New Eden, including a number of bases hidden in the depths of wormhole space. Federal Senate refuses to comment on status of Leopold and Valari while protesting Concord Kaldari. Concord has broadcast the gravimetric and arrest. electromagnetic signatures <laughs> of these locations so the illegal sites can be found using onboard ship scanners. Smuggler dead drop and stash sites have been detected in all regions, with these requiring scanning and hacking to discover and disrupt. Concord has declared that any materials recovered by capsuleers in the course of dismantling the smuggling network will be legitimate salvage to be retained as payment for services to interstellar law and order. Against the background of increased criminal and smuggling activity, a serious diplomatic crisis has sprung up between the Kaldari State and the Galente Federation. As evidence has emerged, pointing towards Galente involvement in the recent mass defection of infiltrators and spies within the Kaldari State, an investigation by Kaldari Counterintelligence has identified a man meeting with Ezri Hakuzosu days prior to her defection as Leopold N. Valari, a Galente diplomat attached to the Federal Consulate on the Jita 4 tac 4 trade hub. 
Leopold and Valari appears to have been assisting the Galente Senate delegation visiting the Caldari state two months ago. One key goal of the Senate delegation's visit was to explore possible avenues of achieving a peaceful resolution of the status of the long-disputed Intaki system. Located in the contested Placid region, the war-torn system contains Intaki Prime, homeworld of the Intaki people. Extensive militia warfare over the past decade has seen the system change hands dozens of times, with periods of lengthy occupation and even planetary raiding by Kaldari forces. The Senate visit had ended just as the Garista's spy ring was exposed, and Leopold and Valari is reported to have returned to the Federation with the Galente delegation. The Kaldari state's chairman, Akima Kasaraki, is known to have been in direct communication with President Celis Agard of the Galente Federation as diplomats on both sides scramble to swiftly resolve this sudden crisis. The Galente Federation firmly denies any involvement in the infiltration of state military and research agencies by Garista spies, but this development has already set back discussions on the future of the Intaki system, causing alarm on Intaki Prime. Federal authorities are refusing to confirm or deny reports that Envalari has subsequently disappeared. The Kaldari state has added Leopold and Valari to their most wanted list, ignoring Galente protests at listing a federal diplomat as a wanted criminal. The scope will report as the situation develops. This is Alton Havari reporting for the scope. All right, and just to finish up this little arc, it leads to this. Capsuleers attending a session of the Interstellar so Anti-Smuggling and Counter-Piracy Conference at the Jita 4 tac 4 Trade Hub were surprised when a Concord presentation on rising smuggler activity was apparently hijacked by the very same smugglers. Platitudes, blandishments, lies. You of all people know that Concord and the Empires have no interests in common with you. They have done nothing for you. They shall do nothing for you. How long will you listen to their empty words? In recent days, as is their pitiful habit, Concord has made use of you to advance their own agenda. These free trade outposts you have so willingly cleared of my associates have been taken over by Concord's worst, the Cerro. Perhaps you don't believe me? Check for yourself. I have broadcast the new signatures of those sites to all. Why should you not destroy the Sorrow Bully Boys? They have always sought to control you. Do their bidding no more. Open your eyes. Seize your destiny. And, if you would, join me, the Deathless. Embarrassed by this intrusion, Concord officials have refused to comment on sorrow activity at occupied smuggler outposts, other than to state that measures are simply being carried out to ensure the complete eradication of illegal smuggling activities. Any recent improvements in the strained diplomatic relationship between the Galente Federation and the Caldari State have been overshadowed by claims that a Galente diplomat was involved in a massive spy ring operating within the Caldari State. The Kaldari State's chairman, Akima Kasaraki, delivered a fiery speech in a live broadcast from the Kaldari chief executive panel yesterday. The scheduled speech was reportedly originally aimed at promoting interstellar diplomacy due to the ongoing Jita 4 tac 4 summit. However, with state corporations and citizens expressing outrage over the new allegations, the delivered speech leaned heavily into patriotic rhetoric and evoked previous hostilities with the Galente State. We remain Kaldari, no matter the cost. No direct response or comments have been made by the Galente Federation so far, but Federation Navy and Customs Forces have been placed on heightened alert status. This is Alton Havari, reporting for The Scope. Okay, guys, yes. Concord is the true enemy of all Empyreans. Uh, but, yeah, that's pretty much it right now, guys. There is, uh, there is new buildup in Ammo and in Mehator. There is things going on all over the place. There's things going on in Pochvin. There's apparently rogue drone stuff showing up somewhere that people were talking about. So get out there. 
get in the war zones, get in these different headquarters, get all over the place and, and look for what's going on. Excuse me. There's a lot going on. There's still more to discover. Uh, you know, just make sure to report it to me as fast as you can. So that way we can talk about it here. Uh, but I think that that just about covers it for today. Uh, tomorrow we will be back. I have no idea whether or not the event's going to start. I have no idea what we're going to talk about. I'm open to ideas, uh, especially in the supporters. If you want to talk to me in the uh, supporter chat, then that'd be fine. Uh, Esri is still in Venal. Yep, same place. Same place. It's, she hasn't moved. So all things to keep an eye on, guys. So, um, yeah, I, I just want to thank you guys all for, for hanging out and, and participating and helping out. Uh, and I also want to thank my supporters, my top supporters being Abyssus, Aikawarazu Chan, Aradinika the Queen, Belligerent Neckbeard, Black Rose Noble, Bombers Bar, Dejat Lamont, Drake, Golden Age Stories, Jay Kuhn, LM1, Lumi, Malik Starfire, Midnight Space Monkey, Not Just Fun, Seeds of Plenty, Serenity with No Eyes, Seliana Valesh, Tien Tien, Nephilim, Grendel, Zalnex, as well as my Immortal Tears pay, pay, uh, supporters of Ebolite, May, Merc Utan, and rid oh and of course thank you double thank you to lm1 for gifting those subs to steve stanchfield coney gm trails john a and shalardrian on their behalf thank you uh so much there lm1 thank you for the lore education love the red jacket i appreciate it yeah this is a this is my theory wear jacket but uh yeah, so, yes, thank you to LM1. Also to uh, the super chat from the earlier. Sean uh, Bogard. Yeah, for the guinea pigs. Thank you guys so much. And, and, yes, one last reminder. For the benefit of the guinea pigs, make sure to like the, the video. And uh, go back. I put out a video yesterday, which is all about inventory, asset management, and all that stuff. Everything you could possibly want to know uh, to when it comes to dealing with your own stuff and keeping it organized. Check it out. Make sure to like it and comment it and share it with your friends. I've been Ashrothi. I've been talking about this game. I've been playing this game since 2010. Talking about it since 2012. I'm here to put even into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks for hanging out. I will be on my Discord later. You can come and hang out with me again. It, uh, I appreciate you guys enjoying the show. Hopefully, should be that we will have just as awesome of a show tomorrow. Until then, I hope to see or I hope to see you then. But until then, I've been Ashrathi, and I'll see you in space. Oh yeah, if you want to become one of my supporters, uh, consider joining my Patreon or becoming a major ma a member. Haha. -ha. Y'all have a nice evening too. Bring on the wrecking machine. See